Hey, this is Benjamin Nelson, your Season 7 WSSR Cup Champion. I'd like to give a thanks to Roasty Jim's Coffee, Trophy Smack, all the admins at WSSR, Snowy Desert Racing, everybody that tunes in to the Freaky Fast broadcast every week, including my family and friends, co-workers as well. And I am so honored to be able to hoist this beautiful trophy. I've never been more proud to be a champion. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Freaky Fast Broadcasting on your Wednesday night. Tonight's a special one. After 16 races, the field has been set to our final six. Six drivers are now entered into our championship round where they will fight for two races to figure out who will be crowned the season eight champion. All points are reset. They're at zero and it's down to see who can maximize on their points and positionings for the next two races. Here at Charlotte, next week at Kansas, who will hoist the trophy from Trophy Smack to become your WSSR Roasted Gems Cup Series champion for season eight? Well, tonight we get to start that journey. A lot of the drivers coming off of a week of slight controversy in real life NASCAR, very similar controversy just happened. A restart violation takes away John Forbes's win last week for the driver of the 11 machine at Le uh, Legacy Kentucky, gifting the win to Shane Terrian. Will there be any luck or penalties gifted out here tonight? Well, certainly excited to give you all the coverage to see if those answered and those questions will be answered. Welcome to Freaky Fast Broadcasting. My name is Sam Dyer. Joining me a little bit later is going to be Robert Moyer Jr. As Justin Malarkey has prior obligations that he's got to go deal with tonight. So it's going to be a Robert and Sam show this evening. We're excited to give you all the coverage here at Charlotte on Freaky Fast Broadcasting. The field just got done with practice as we are going to be sending it trackside to go see how the drivers are going to be faring for qualifying. Where will you be set? How will you handle the attack? Certainly going to be fun to watch at our mile and a half destination tonight at Charlotte next week at Kentucky, at, at, at that at Kansas, excuse me. Two tracks that have really given us some of the best shows in the Gen 4 last season. The drivers decided, let's make it the final two races for season eight. And I'm excited that they decided on both of these tracks. They're going to be fun ones to watch out for. Cannot wait for it as qualifying gets started. All drivers have two laps to put down their fastest time as they only have five minutes to do so. And going to be seeing one of our championship contenders, Ryan Kelly, out on track. One of the six drivers hunting for the championship. We also are going to be seeing how Ken Campbell is going to fray. Zach Hall, Brian McCann, Shane Tarion, our winner from last week, and our previous champion, Benjamin Nelson, the only previous champion that will be running here for a championship. We have already lost the other two as Vincent Sora is no longer going to be running in this series as he's backed away uh, the last two seasons and then we also lost the likes of Larry Yingling back in round number one we lost uh going to be Brian P Johnson last week as he had internet issues that took him out of a chance to run for a championship but tonight the final six ready to see who will grab that top dog spot there's no win and you get a championship we got two races to get the most points right now it's the three machine of ryan kelly top of the board after lap number one it's gonna be a 29.843 lap time for himself it's the field trying to see if they can gap a little bit more speed overall brian p johnson could be one of the first drivers to finish out both of his laps gonna be third on the board but kelly wants to find that extra speed on lap number two 
Bryson Hicksonball in second place did advance in his time, but he's going to be about 100 slower. And after lap two's done, Kelly did move up that gap in that lead just slightly by two hundredths of a second. We'll see how much more speed the other driver is going to have to compete and compare to grab the pole spot. Last season, it was Benjamin Nelson that grabbed the pole position. See if he can do so here tonight. Cody Reed had very much a Cinderella underdog chance last week to try to make the championship six uh but clock hit midnight and was not able to continue his way forward a driver though that feels like he was maybe snubbed out of a chance to run for uh, a win last week dominated at kentucky was brian mccann but a late caution made it where it was a chance for pit stop strategies to throw away the eight machines win and ultimately took four tires this field took two and McCann lost the chance to go to victory lane. Here tonight, though, the eights hoping for a fast time. Going to be sixth on the board after that first lap and hoping to grab maybe a little bit of extra speed to get go even higher up into the top five. I think track position is going to be a big thing for us to talk about throughout this evening, but qualifying slowly chipping away. A minute and 20 seconds left in qualifying. Still waiting for Benjamin Nelson to put down his fastest lap. His first lap was invalidated for the 79 machine. We'll see if he can get any higher. Speaking of a higher, Brian McCann, second on the board. Quick time for the machine. Nice lap for himself. Also, Larry Yingling, another driver that won this race last season, going to be up to fifth place. And Benjamin Nelson looks to be backing out. He's not going to have enough time to put down a lap time. Nelson will start in the back half of the field as Cameron Sarn going to be starting his lap here for the 99 just gonna have time for just maybe one lap potentially two if we can get ripping and rolling but as we uh come up into the booth for a quick second we have robert moyer jr gonna be joining us and as well running productions here tonight robert it's great to have you up in the booth with me uh i know you're running double duty it's not an easy task to deal with but we're happy to have you up in the board up uh, with us in the booth with us hey, hey uh, up in the board <laughs> all right i'm in the big screen out here <laughs> watching the watching the race but yes thank you sam uh yeah it's double duty but hey it's all right we'll, we'll get her done here and uh we'll we're gonna see what uh you know what these guys can do here tonight you know here at charlotte you know the home track of everybody just loves you know i heard it all week you know everybody loves this track everybody loves this track but with qualifying set uh finished up here we will get ready to roll into warm-up here sam yeah these drivers gonna have five minutes of warm-up time get any last practice sessions that they want as well as figure out where their pit box are gonna be for tonight's race and it gives us a time to look at the point standings for these drivers here tonight and where drivers are slotted in for tonight's race as six drivers have made it to the championship run as here are your top six running for a championship for the final two races counting tonight ken campbell zach hall ryan kelly brian mccann last season's champion of benjamin nelson and shane tarian our winner from last week and also last season's regular season champion Hoping to grab a, maybe a little bit of extra uh, momentum of, after coming off of last week's win and off of a technicality uh, move by the admins to deem, hey, John Forbes had made uh, a, a move where he would jump the start and that advantage needed to be uh, hit pretty harshly with an EOL at the end of the race. But Robert, those six drivers, yeah. I know names that you know quite well, uh, some of those drivers hunting for a championship, but I feel like even if you look at all series that we've covered here in Freaky Fast Broadcasting, that's some of the top dogs that we've seen in any series that we cover. Oh, most definitely top dogs. You know, we know Ken Campbell, Zach Hall, like you said, you know, go down through the list here of these top six here. Um, yeah, I mean, these guys are, are tough and, it, you know, we've seen them in the Xfinity cars. We've seen them in the next gen cars. We've seen them in, uh, you know, the gen four cars, um, the hor the lower horsepower, the high horsepower of what they're running here right now. Um, so, but you know, what catches my eye here on this point standings here is Ken Campbell. Uh, he's plus five, right? He's up there at first and you got Benjamin Nelson all the way down in fifth with five wins. So that just goes to show you bonus points mean a lot and you know the way the way everything gets ranked up well actually what's interesting about the point up? situation 
is the fact that they will no longer have bonus points to work with. With this championship round, all six drivers are starting at equal. It was just the way that they lined up right. when they took all the bonus points away. And ah, okay. Ken Campbell, Zach Hall, Ryan Kelly, Brian McCann, gotcha. Nelson, and Tarion, all going to be at 4,000 points to start this round off. It's all based off the points that they're going to be gaining for tonight and next week. Well, and that's what, you know, that's what you said tonight and next week. I mean, you're racing the whole field, of course, here tonight. You know, you got two more races left to go. It all, you know, they worked, they worked all season to get to this point, them top six drivers. Now it starts tonight. Tonight is the night where you don't want to make any mistakes. You don't want to get involved in anything. And you really don't have to race for the win. Just finish ahead of them top five drivers that you're battling with. Right, Sam? I mean, that's that's all you got to worry about. So if you finish second and all them guys are behind you, bam, it's a win. I mean, it might not be a win that, you know, you're getting out on track, but it's a win to move on to next week. You take those small victories to look at the big picture for some of these drivers. And hey, let's take a, a picture of how this season's been going as we take a look at our schedule of how these drivers have been running throughout the season. We've had so many different winners throughout the season. The one with the most wins is Benjamin Nelson with five. We've had plenty of drivers that have gotten two wins this season. Uh, think of Shane Terry and Ryan Kelly, um, as well as Zach Hall with their two wins this season. But plenty of other mm -hmm. drivers have shown out for, for pole times. I think there was one driver, though, who got the pole for the first race of the season, uh, Robert, that you kind of were shocked when we were looking at practice. Ross Tatum looks to be out on track for tonight's race. Yeah, it's good to see Ross Tatum back out on the track there. I wonder if he's running a, a funky new Coke machine. I don't even know what scheme he has on. Um, but Coke came out with a new flavor. Have you heard about it, Sam? Is this the spice flavor? Yeah, that been yeah, talking that, about? yeah, yeah. And um, I haven't tried it, so I can't say yay or nay, but it <laughs> doesn't sound too good. But uh, I honestly was too afraid to even try. I've seen it, but I've been like, oh, I'm going to try something else that I, I know I can trust and enjoy. There but you go. That is going to be your schedule for how the races are going to be going tonight, Charlotte kansas next week to be your official last race of the season but these last two races is your championship round to figure out who will take the season eight championship thank you so much to everyone that's just gonna be joining with us here tonight for this evening's race you're gonna be seeing charlotte racing and during the daytime for 150 laps there will be no comp yellow no fast repair for these drivers to have in their back pocket and they only will have five extra sets and tires for tonight's race in pit road to work with those those five sets going to be important with the timings of maybe if we have some late yellows maybe some early yellows really could change up the dynamic of tonight's race and the fuel window for a mile and a half track 45 to 48 laps which was a big change up to how drivers raced last week at kentucky we'll talk on it a little bit more on how that might influence tonight's race. But first, the drivers are gridding up, and it's time for us to take a look at our starting grid here tonight for the WSSR Rosa Gems Cup Series Championship Race 1 of 2. Pole award winner, gonna go to the three machine of Ryan Kelly, one of your championship six. In second place, two is outside, will be another championship top six driver, and the eight team of Brian McCann winning some redemption after last week. Bryson Hickson uh, joined in the middle of the season, and he's been a shining star of the rookie class, he's starting in third. Season one champion, gonna be in fourth place of Brian Johnson, a three time champion of Larry Yingling, both drivers in the fourth and fifth no longer running for a championship this season but another driver that is running for a championship is zach hall the most starting starts of anyone in the wssr trying to go for his first ever wssr championship journey starts tonight in sixth for zach hall deadless new beginning in seventh in eighth place cedric hunter anthony Gotti is going to be starting in ninth tenth is where we find ken campbell probably the biggest underdog coming into this round 11th, we find Christopher Wade, Mason Cassidy in 12th, 13th, it's Danny Cochran, and finish at our top 14, it's going to be John Forbes in the 11th. 15th place, we find Ollie Fonseca, Jason Tamer, in the rest of the field, but Robert, this class, this field, biggest shock, deeper in the field to watch out for, Shane Terrian in 21st place, then as well, Benjamin Nelson in 24th, 
they are so far back. They got a lot of work if they want to get up front and challenge for a win. Oh, most definitely. I've got a lot of work here to do here tonight. Um, you know, but it's 150 laps. They can get it done if you take care of your tires and take care of your car. Um, but, you know, also, you know, starting way back there like that too, Sam. You know, you got to watch out for the pit stops, right? I mean, you're, you're pitting way back and you can lose or, you know, I... I, you can gain, but you you don't want to lose more than what you gain. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And no driver is going to be having an EOL penalties here tonight. So they will be starting where they qualified this evening. Up front, championship contenders, Ryan Kelly, Brian McCann going to be your top two. How well can you move through the field? For Benjamin Nelson, he got some practice in moving through the field after last week's end of the line penalty to start the race off. We'll see if he's found a little bit of magic here tonight. Into the restart zone. We are green for the first race of the championship round for season eight. The WSSR Rosa Gems Cup Series. Going to find Ryan Kelly, Brian McCann side by side through one and two. But watch out. Watch out for the exit of turn two. These tires are going to be slick. They're cold. And the field holds steady for now as they roar down into turn number three. And it's the three machine. Ryan Kelly leading the way. But McCann, he wants to get that lap led that's a bonus point for this race that will carry forward into the championship round and the eight gets loose and it's the three of kelly that will lead lap number one and kelly's going to lead lap number one as they go down into turn one here again for the second time and looks like we're going to get the top six or seven there sam all lined up here you got you know, from from the looks of it right now yeah, it's most of our top 10 going to be in line with one another. A little bit of moves looks to be made for fourth place with Brian P. Johnson and Larry Yingling trying to move his way forward. McCann setting up for a pass potentially for first, but Brian P. Johnson, Larry Yingling, they're just running for race wins. No longer a championship run, but drivers that are in the mix and mingle of this Hornet's Nest find the 15 of Ken Campbell in that Under Armour's 15 machine on the outside. And... Ken Campbell coming into this race. The biggest underdog, if you look at the stats coming into tonight, only three top fives, seven top tens. Everyone else at least has five to almost ten. Five top fives and at least ten top tens in this round. Zach Wilson, the only other driver that doesn't have ten top tens coming into this round, but he had two wins this season. So mm -hmm. it's been make or break for the 32, but watching that Ken Campbell, he's been an under-the-radar driver, but I think if he wants the championship, a win might need to be in the grass of the 15. Hey, I agree with you there, Sam, as these guys are still battling. We've got Zach Hall now looking like he's getting in a line. And you got Cedric Hunter down here trying to battle to number four here of, I believe, Mason Cassidy here. He's trying to get around him going down into number, uh, number three and four here. But that's the key. Exiting out of four, like you talked about it earlier, Sam, that is a tough place to exit to make a pass. Um, it, the car gets tight. The wall comes closer to you. And sometimes if you don't hit that turn right, you got to lift here. As we still see a lot of gag cars back here with John Forbes and everybody. All stacked up, all together. But they keep it straight for now. Five laps in the books. And this field still willing to grab every position possible. A couple of drivers have moved up four positions. Others have given up four positions. Right now, of those that are up front, biggest movers, Mason Cassidy up four spots. John Forbes up four spots. And as well, now up five spots is the 81 of Jason Tamer ripping the top. Haven't seen Jason Tamer for a while. 81 willing to get aggressive. And this is one of those drivers as well as the 77. I would say a Brian Noel. They're willing to be as aggressive as they need as we ride uh, on the board with Anthony Gaudio. Seeing those drivers utilize the top line Audio, staying low, and I like that call. Stay low, try to save these tires. The drivers on the outside, they have the grip now to rip the top. But how hurt will these tires be, or how aggressive they're being, in the next 15 to 20 laps, when they're really going to be falling backwards? Yeah, and that's going to be the key. We'll, we'll find out here within the next 15 laps, like you said here, Sam. But you can just see how comfortable everybody feels that running it at this track. You know, people put multiple laps on, you know, here at Charlotte, you know, because it is a free track. Oh, that's the 77 is going to get loose a little bit. Ooh, wow, he saved that going out of three and four there, Sam. He certainly did, and his teammate, the seven machine, right below Anthony. Oh, uh, Anthony Gaudio, 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 Gaudio scrapes the wall. 
And with these drivers, they're already feeling the pain. And behind them, trouble for the two machine of Danny Cochran. Those behind Anthony Gaudio got spooked by the 29, scraping the wall in entry. And actually forced the two machine into the wall as well to hurt himself. Going from oh. battling up front instead of our top 20 to now, I mean, instead of our top 15, now outside of our top 20 is the two machine. Yeah, and if you, if, uh, we don't got a camera angle to get onto that, onto his right side, but he, it, that, that car is uh, pretty, pretty binged uh, and hit. It is absolutely dinged and hit, and all coming off of just one bad entry point, scrubbing the wall on the entry of turn one, that of two laps ago now. As they continue to race their way around, this is going to be a hurt spot for Danny Conquer, but again, not one of our championship six, championship six drivers, but a uh, driver that we know that can be quick. And you're going to see similar scheme, but in a different number. So 24 of Ollie Fonseca, teammate of Danny Cochran. Trying to get that Lariat Productions machine inside of our top 15, currently running in that 16th position. Running 16th position as we see Christopher Wade there. He's going to go high and let Cam Sorton go right with Cody Reed's now going to look to go underneath uh, the 53 here. And then it also it looks like you got Christopher Norris. I do believe they're going to try to make a move here. Yeah, as he's getting down low here, and he's going to try to make the move as he's got Nick Crawford, his teammate, I do believe, on this night, right? They're teammates here tonight. Oh, wait, now we just got somebody in the wall again. Was that Cody Reed? But he was close to getting in the wall. He was able to just scave away. I think it was a, a slight brush. Christopher Wade might have been the one that got the worst of it for the 53 who backs off, but... These drivers getting very close. They're trying to arc their way through the corners and get the most that they can. The outside wall kind of sneaks up on you on the entry of turn one, at least. The wall kind of has a, a slight indent that goes pushing towards the track. And that little indent really can spook drivers if they're not paying attention enough, especially with how compact everyone is. You know, if the drivers in front of you is a little bit too close, maybe you don't see that entry spot that you're aiming for. Small mistakes can hurt you greatly, especially on the fact that none of these drivers have fast repairs. And you're at Charlotte, not track if you look at the past, known for cautions. Yeah, oh, we might see move. one. Noel, what a save in front of John Forbes. You can just see him doing a slow slide, losing the rear end, but somehow keeps it together. Great save by the 77. And that almost was going to collect at least two to three drivers. Oh, man. What a save, like you said there, Sam. That was crazy. Now, he needs to back down a little bit. Um, I think he's pushing the car a little bit too hard. I've been watching him for the last three, four laps, and I just think he's he, he's got the speed, and he's like, man, I'm ready to race here tonight. And, you know, you get that you get that adrenaline going, like, you're, man, you just feel so good. But at the same time, you just see what he did there going through there, and he slid, you know slid that car, saved it. You know, thank thankful for everybody else. But I think he needs to back down now and you know cool them rear tires down there, Sam. Also, Robert sneaking into the shot right behind the 77. Started all the way back in 24th position. Now going to be up to 13th. Benjamin Nelson. I mean, talked about the fact that he kind of got a, a practice run last week. Kentucky had to start all the way back in the end of the field during that race as well. And he is learning quickly. And this 79 already up to 13th, our biggest mover up 11 spots. Whoa. Yeah, maybe it's good luck. Maybe it's good luck, Sam. Maybe maybe next week he's going to start in the back again and go, look, I did it. I did it two weeks ago. I did it last week. I might as well do it again, you know, next week, right? I mean, maybe he has his lucky charm. Um, but, you know, you said he figured it out, but we'll see. I mean, if he does it again, that is a very <laughs> gutsy move to continue on because we've seen that it, it's very tense driving, trying to drive through this field. And we just saw Noel have a big slide there. We've also seen a couple of other drivers have a hold your breath moment. But for now, uh, it's working for Nelson to work for the field. I don't want to imagine he's going to use that same tactic next week without crucial of a race. Next week's going to be being the official last race of the season but tonight the tone center for our championship six drivers all starting at 4,000 points and it's all about getting the most points for tonight and next week to grab the season eight championship at the moment seeing some patch champion uh championship drivers of Frankie johnson in the 28 machine the right in front of them in the black 67 is larry yingling a three-time champion of the wssr behind them ken campbell 15 slowly making his way forward and Robert 
like Ken does, just sneakily moving his way forward and just staying out of trouble. He's a snake under a rock. You don't know he's there until all of a sudden he snaps at you and you're like, where did he come from? You know, that, that that's Ken Campbell. That's what he reminds me. We've seen him do this in and out, in and out all season. And like you noted on, you know, in other leagues and other cars, he's a guy we just don't talk about. We, we just don't, you know, he don't get a lot of spotlight, you know, um, but, you know, when he's good, he, he's on. And right now he's looking good. And I'm, I'm just looking at the, the standings here right now. You got, you got Ryan Kelly, uh, McCann, you know, they're two playoff drivers, first and second up there, doing what they need to do. Then you got Ken Campbell back here running in sixth position, you know, so, and then you got Ben moving up through the field. You got Zach Hall running seventh. You know, all our champion guys are, are a little bit spread out, but they're still close enough to each other. Yeah, they're still close enough at this moment, but there is one driver I'm slightly concerned about. That's Shane Terry in the back in 20th position. Pretty far back, but again, very early in this race, 19 laps in the book of 150. And as we're closing in on, on lap 20, this is gonna be that transitional phase. Uh, I was touching on drivers that were maybe using that outside lane, being super aggressive on their tires. They're gonna start to feel that hurt and pain here very shortly. But if you look back to last week, and most mile and a half tracks, Robert, it has been very awkward on the timing that you want to come into pit road. Mm -hmm. The fuel limit for these drivers is going full bore around 45 to 48 laps. That is just outside the window of turning this race into a two stop. But if you focus on fuel saving, you can turn this race into a two stop run. Other drivers, though, if we look back to last week, went for the three stop. And it was the it was the much faster way to go at the time in the yellows hurt those drivers at the end of the day you, you you took the words right out of my mouth there sam um you know they're great two stop you can push it but i don't i don't think these cars like that um i it's all about keeping the tires on the car um and and running at full speed it's a very momentum car where you just got to keep going 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 and don't save um unless them cautions you know land right into your lap and i mean now, now you're now you might as well just go to Las Vegas. You know, you're, you're rolling the dice and hoping that you get that caution at that time. So I don't like the two stop, you know, strategy. I think three stop is the way to go. And the driver that maximized the most on that three stop strategy last week, Ryan McCann. He was the, ultimately the top dog, fastest driver of that run. Currently runs in second at the moment. A driver that's tagging along with Ryan McCann's strategy, Ryan Kelly. Up front, both those championship drivers started 1-2. They've stayed 1-2. Our top three have not moved at all in positions for based off where they qualified. But Ryan Kelly, Brian McCann, they are pulling away from Bryson Hixenbaugh. And I think for Bryson, he's trying to pace himself, slowly closing in on Ryan Kelly. But these drivers really on it and trying to stay as focused as they can. Well, we can watch the focus here of Brian uh, McCann here. We got him on camera here, and you can see him really just... It's amazing, man. My arms would fall off the way he runs his cars and the steering inside of him, Sam. I mean, he's getting a workout. I don't care what anybody says. It might be a sim game, but, man, you just watch how he just he, he manhandles and muscles that, that car around, you know, the track. Yeah, and the big reason why he's manhandling it as much as he is is the wheel type that we're seeing McCann use. He's using what we call a direct drive wheel. It gives you more of a sensation and able to feel a lot more of the car uh, based off of instead of just, you know, gears that are inside of the steering wheel. Uh, there's a lot more technicality yeah. to these wheels that cost a lot more than your uh, <laughs> your normal $100, yeah. $200 ste uh, dollar steering wheel that uh, most drivers start out with. Oh, yeah. I mean, he, again, my... Uh, yeah, good for him because my arms would fall off as we were watching him here. He's still trying to, you know, chase down. Right, whoops, I just hit the wrong button. Brian Kelly uh, looks, um, uh, I do apologize. I, I muted myself there, Sam. Um, <laughs> um, he's still trying to chase down Ryan Kelly here. But right now, Ryan Kelly's just looking, uh, you know, it looks like he just looks pretty good right now. And he's just taking it nice and easy. Yeah, I would say our, our top three all in a, a pretty similar spot, taking it pretty easy, running aggressively up front. It's everyone that's further on back. This is just outside of our top 10. Where we're watching this battle for 12th place. Jason Tamer going to be on the outside lane. He's got the 99 of 
Cameron Sarton to his inside. They're going to be tight squeeze through the quad oval oh. as they set up for turn number one. Anthony Gaudio also trying to get their way through. And the 2981, watch out. They're squeezing off the center of the corner and almost contact for that battle that's still raging for third place. Yeah, and as you were talking about that, I was looking in the background here with Ollie Fonseca, man. His car was doing the same thing, man, what the 77 did. He was wheeling it. Oh, oh boy, Slight what do you see? though between that 81 and the 29 in the center of the corner. They keep it straight, but Tamer is still out of control oh. trying to hold on. And this is right in front of our championship contender of Shantarian. He does not want to see these drivers squeezing or making contact, especially around him here at this moment. And this is that risk Hires. factor that we kind of talked about uh, on, you know, you start in the back, you have that bad qualifying run. You have to work your way through the field. You get to this point of the race where drivers are very close to making wrecks with one another. Well, yeah, making close to making wrecks, but again, you know, we, we said lap 25 right now. We're on lap going on lap 30 here, Sam. These tires are now feeling it. If you overcooked them, it, it, you're, you know, you're going to struggle like you see Tamer here and Ollie and uh, everybody else that they're just sliding his car, wiggling it, coming out, man. And I'm telling you, hey, these guys are doing a good job as well. Terry and still against Tamer here side by side. Side by side. And get to this point of a race so much pressure on the championship six we're seeing them running well as tamer sure rips that vehicle off the wall and make sure he does not make contact but all these drivers if you're not a playoff driver your ultimate goal is just to get the best finish for some maybe you've had a rough season you're just trying to get back that momentum uh, before we go into season nine which exciting news season nine these drivers will be coming back for the wssr moving to the next gen vehicle moving away from the gen four and so for some of these drivers here tonight that didn't make the championship six, it's go out there, put on the best show you can, and ultimately find good momentum that you can work off of or go for wins and maybe be a little bit of a, a thrill or, or you know, stealing the shine from our championship six. But one driver that isn't really losing any touch, it's up to seventh now. Yeah. Benjamin Nelson here, Robert, is doing a fantastic job at moving forward. Um, I was looking at the lap times right now. He's just about a tenth off of Ryan Kelly right now. Um, so his last lap, we'll see what he runs here as he's getting ready to cross that start finish line here. Um, but Ryan Kelly ran a 32.4 to Ben's 32.3. So now he was like two tenths faster than him. So he's slowly creeping away. And that's pretty interesting too, as some guys are struggling, you know, that we seen in the back half of the field here. On lap 32, the front guys seem like they saved their tires a little bit better, and they're not struggling as much as the back half of the field. Yeah, I would say they've, they've done a very good job right Ooh. now, the front half of the field at this moment, as Nelson has a slight wiggle off the exit, but a pass for second place. Bryson Hixenbaugh finding some good speed for himself up front, as seeing the 63, as we're starting to get to that changing factor of drivers that are aiming for the three stop they're expected to hit pit road here in the next uh, i would say now until lap 45 is going to be their window that they're aiming for for the drivers are going for a three stop the two stop strategies get to lap 50 or 51 so mm -hmm. they try to go a little bit further than that as one driver has made a pit stop that's going to be brian noel who we saw one of the first drivers really be slipping and sliding with his tires but bryson hicksenbach here this 63 he was just Kind of shadowing our top two for most of this race, staying about within a second. So within striking distance and protecting his tires, he's now on the move, catching up to Ryan Kelly. Other drivers that are on the move, Shane Tarion, he has now made two passes since we were watching the battle between our top three, setting up to get by the 52 of Cody Reed. Yeah, he got past Cody. Well, he's trying to set up Cody Reed here, but I wanted to go back and uh, <clears throat> talk a little bit about Sam um, as he's got, man, oh my goodness, Ollie Fonseca, Ooh. I'm telling you, that is the fourth time now, Sam, that I've seen that car do that. Yeah, and he got a little bit of a tap from his teammate, and somehow they kept it straight. These vehicles that we've documented many times this season, he gave a bump, and most likely one or both drivers are spinning around. And the teammates hold it together for now at this moment, but uh, I would imagine pit stops are, are looming. But the way I'm seeing this 81 fall backwards, the way Ollie's been struggling off the exit, this is just a, a chaos and a powder keg waiting to explode <laughs> with how close they are. 
Yeah, well, let's hope the cake don't explode because that would be one crappy of a mess. Hey, it's <laughs> As Ross Tatum drifts in front, putting some dirty air on the front of the 81 machine of Jason Tamer. Old steady. We're so close to pit stops and get some fresh rubber for this group, unless all of them are thinking to stretch it out as long as you can. At this moment, still only one driver is pitted for the three-stop strategy. That's uh, going to be Brian Noel. Could be that everyone's thinking of two-stop here, which, I mean, if everyone's doing the same strategy, it doesn't hurt you too bad to uh, continue on the yeah. way he, most of these drivers have been going. Yeah, very true. I mean, if everybody's going to do it, then, then, then there's no harm in it, right? I mean, it's, you know, that's, that's perfectly fine then. Um, but anyways, what I wanted to go back before these guys start doing their, uh, you know, pit stops here, Sam. I wanted to talk about two seasons ago. Or, you know, yeah, they ran the next gen cup as a season, you know, as a, after their high hiatus, I guess they, uh, you know, they ran the next gen cup cars and they, they, they were good. But, you know, from then until what we're going to have next season, those cars changed from, you know, way back then to now with iRacing giving the updates and, and NASCAR changing things with the cars. So it's going to be interesting to see how these guys hop back into those cars that did run them for a little bit and uh, see what they do with the, with the new update because um, we haven't seen much of them except for Thursday night. You know, it's the only time we ever see anything going on right now as I'll shut up here as we do got pit stops going on here, Sam. Well, you certainly do have pit stops. One driver going to get caught with an unsafe pit entry and speeding. Douglas Newbigging in the seven. He's going to mm. have a 42nd hold. Pitting of lap prior to these drivers we just saw on screen coming to pit road was Brian McCann. But it, our front three initially of Ryan Kelly, Bryson Hicksonbaugh, and Brian McCann have all hit pit road. They're aiming for that three-stop strategy. And other drivers for the next round going to be Benjamin Nelson coming in by himself. Interesting that he waits an extra lap. But all these drivers that stay out a little bit longer, uh, this is a, a gutsy call to continue to stay out if you're aiming for the three-stop strategy. But some drivers might decide with the call of we're going to stay out as long as we can and try to get the advantage of cutting down a full pit stop, which would be uh, saving about 30 to 40 seconds if you can do it properly. But more drivers at pit road, Cedric Hunter, John Forbes, they make their stop. Yep, they make their stop here, but you know, you still got Larry out here. You still got Brian Johnson still out here. Yeah, you still got Zach Hall, Shane Terry, and Cody Reed, Mason Cassidy, Ali Fonseca, or Ross Tatum. You know, these guys here, well, they got nothing to lose, right? I mean, so might as well go for the long run and see what you can do, and hopefully the cards fall into your hands here as well. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Well, that's one, one way of the to more enter. aggressive pit entries. Larry Yingling just ships it down into the pit entry spot. And luckily, the marker to hit your pit window or your speed mileage window isn't right at that concrete wall. It's a little bit further in Yingling able to slow down inside. These drivers, uh, for most, going about 147 miles per hour at their slowest through the corners. You have to slow down to just 45 miles per hour. And somehow, Larry Yingling hit the mark and did not, did not get called with a black flag. Yeah, he entered pit road at 180 miles per hour. <laughs> That's what it looked like. And whoa, oh, no. it that call. Oh, no. That is a lot of time, and he's pointing in the wrong direction. He's going to be perpendicular with the wall. He's got to get pointed straight, and he finally does, uh -huh. but all the time lost for Zach Hall in a scary position, especially with the chance of oncoming traffic. That could have been a mess that would have happened. Luckily, no black flag also for Hall, but, I mean, with how long that spin was, uh, the fact that he had to lock down, back up, and then go forward, that's at least 12 to, if not more, seconds given up. And for Hall, he's going to need a caution to get back into the mix here. Yeah, yeah most definitely. And normally, Zach has uh, problems every once in a while with pit stops, you know, entering his stall not coming into the pit road you know that that he might he might be working on a new trick there sam I, maybe hanging around the wrong drivers maybe uh, <laughs> but i think maybe at the same point it's hard to slow down with these gen yeah. 4 cars they are these brakes are not kind when you try to slow down especially with some of these drivers they they change their brake bias on where they feel most comfortable if they want to use their brake during the race they'll 
push the brakes more to the rear end. So if you hit the brakes uh, very aggressively as you come into pit road, you might loop the car around and spin out like we saw there for Zach and mm -hmm. other drivers know it is very difficult if you make the wrong adjustments to recover. But at this current moment, still waiting for Brian P. Johnson, Shane Terry to make their pit stops as well as Ross Tatum, Christopher Wade, Nick Crawford, Christopher Norris, seven drivers still out on track. And it, with them being out, as long as they have, you'd think they're aiming for lap 50, but Shane Terrian will not hit that window, nor will Christopher Wade or wow. Ross Tatum. Three wow. drivers were not able to get to lap 50. They'll pit on 45. Interesting. So and now we still got, what, Cody, uh, Cody Ray, Brian Johnson, Nick Crawford still out there trying to get at least four more laps out. They're, they're trying to get at least four. They would love to get five. Six would be incredible because they right. got a little bit more of a bigger window to work with. But Cody Reed won't even make it to lap 50. He hits pit road on lap 46 to 47. Mm. And other drivers, we need, if they're going to hit pit road, Christopher Norris won't hit that window. So we're left with just two going for the two stop. That's Nick Crawford in the 74 and Brian P. Johnson, which Oddly enough, Nick Crawford usually has been known in multiple different series to cover to always be the first driver to hit pit road. It's one of those few times that he's out there the longest that I've ever, ever won. Right? I, well, stop confusing us, guys. Quit changing up your stuff. We, we cover you for 17 weeks. <laughs> I have patterns. I've had my notes. I try to be the Larry Mack if possible, and then you, you just throw all, yeah. all of out the window at times. And one driver that also going to be thrown out the window and calling it a day, Ross Tatum has officially left the server and oh. he is done and dusted. Christopher Norris going to be getting a black flag for speeding off a pit road. That is a worse nightmare because now he's going to drive all oh. the way around and do a drive through as Brian P. Johnson won't hit lap 50. He's going to be two laps shy. Now can Nick Crawford push his fuel a little bit further as the 74 stays out for another lap. He's got two more to at least make the halfway. I wonder if he's clutching. I mean, most likely has to. And that's one of the few things you have to do. And we'll get a good shot here going into turn number four. But you also yes. make sure you, you have a car to drive. Right. That's a great save off of turn two. And yep, there's the clutch. You see that RPM number just drop immediately down to two. Ramps back up to around that eight to seven marker. That's so how you see those, that middle circle. Quickly you see that pin drop. That's oh. clutching that's going on, and he's clutching it very early. This is a kind of a tactic that uh, I think back to Kevin Harvick's racing days at Atlanta. That's how he was so good at that track, was clutching extremely early to save that little bit extra fuel. And for Crawford, he's hit lap 50, but will he drive another lap to solidify some more wiggle room for later on in this race? Well, if he does, he better be careful going through the trial because he's clutching it going through the trial when he couldn't even keep that car straight going through the trial over there, Sam. That's how bad them tires were down. But no, he's not going to go for another lap. He's going to hit on lap number 50. So he did hit his mark. Yeah, he did hit his mark, but I'm looking at the amount of time lost. Uh, yeah. Brian McCann had almost already caught up to Nick Crawford by the time the Crawford hit pit road. That is a lot of time being given up. But the battle for the lead is on Ryan Kelly, Brian McCann, Bryson Hixenbaugh. These drivers closer than they've been since lap one. And it's right back to the duel, the battle, and the driver with the freshest of tires goes to Kelly and Bryson Hixenbaugh. McCann, though, wants to keep the fresh air as long as possible. And Robert, this is the battle that we know could be so crucial, but you don't want to get too aggressive. Big picture here. We're only just finishing the first third of tonight's race. You don't want to throw away all your points now. No, no, absolutely not. And you can see there Ryan Kelly getting the run, and now you're going to have Brian McCann backing off a little bit and uh, running the high side. It looks like he's going to get in line. And then we got Christopher Wade, I do believe, being a lap down. He's going to come up on these leaders. And now you got got, uh, who is that? Bryson now going to look uh, underneath uh, Brian McCann. And Bryson Hixenbaugh was slotted in second place when the pit cycle initially started. So the 63 is just trying to get back to his position right before this whole entire pit cycle started around. Christopher Wade, though, runs 20th behind our top three. A lap down driver, first driver, one lap down, trying to unlap himself the hard way. And for Christopher Wade, 
He has seen a great battle, but the closer you get, the more nerve-wracking it is. And the longer you continue to run, the more the tires start to equal out. There's just a difference of eight laps between our leaders to the 53 of Wade. Wade needs to make these passes quickly and efficiently, but at the same notion, he's the first driver one lap down, so if a caution does come out, he's back in the fight. And be back in the fight, and then out here all lonesome by himself here, five seconds behind the leaders here is going to be Ken Campbell running in fourth position. He, uh, you know, he, he had uh, Zach Hall, you know, running right there with him, but with that Zach, Zach Hall's little issue that he had, here is Zach Hall all the way out here by himself. Now, Sam, running in 18th position at that pit road entrance mistake. Yeah, mistake for 32, staying out so long for Brian P. Johnson. Both of those drivers are over 23 seconds off of where our leader runs now. And for Zach Hall, like, like we said, may need a caution to get back into the fight. Here's Brian Nelson. Uh, there's Benjamin Nelson, though. Looking at trying to figure out what happened to yeah. Nelson because based off his pit time, it wasn't too far off. He just waited an extra three more laps to pit compared to Ryan Kelly and Bryson Hickson, Bob, but that should have only given away maybe eight seconds at most. I'm kind of shocked on the amount of time that Nelson has lost overall because he was inside of our top 10 when the pit cycle started. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm, I'm looking at it here right now, trying to figure it out um, because he went down pit, pit lane and that's uh, entering pit and exiting pit, ladies and gentlemen, at a 37.6 and had a 14 point four pit stop so oh you should have lost maybe a half a second yeah that. It, it, that's a math ain't mathing right now <laughs> yeah like yeah. so we're trying to figure it out but we do know oh, one wow. thing though and that's nelson is almost about to get his lap back and bryson hickson bought through all that complication and trying to get around by lap cars it's the 63 of Hickson Ball. Now your new leader here tonight as Nelson tries to get himself back onto the lead lap and doesn't want to be the lucky dog driver if a caution was to come out. And the 63 pulling away in a comfortable zone. But for the field here tonight, soon to be 60 laps in the book books of 150. It's been a fun one to cover so far as we will take our first commercial break of the night. It's been a pleasure to watch Nelson back on the lead lap. A few other drivers trying to get back in the lead lap as well. But you're watching the WSSR Roast the Gems Cup Series Season 8, Race 1 of the Championship Round. We'll be back right after this with more racing action.
boy behind the pit. Oh my, the five bar in here, this ain't gonna work. They make it last, bumping it, bang it to the end. They're beating Vega for the lead. Sora still with the shot here, coming off a four. Look at him, he's it. It's bottom line, oh. here it comes. Oh, oh no, the corner gets wrecked. It's gonna be that Nick Crawford. The 74 gets through somehow, and they just completely demolish one another. Trying to dive it down low, drifting up, trying oh. to be the stealer. Here he comes, Cedric Hunter. No. He steals it. He steals it. But he somehow drove it into the corner to wreck it. Oh, they wrecked. They wrecked each other. The top two bounced into one another. Just too much. Of side drafting off of, and they gotta be careful. Oh no, the four demolishes in the 28. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Freaky Fast Broadcasting on your Wednesday night. My name is Sam Dyer. With me up in the booth, as well as doing double duty, Robert Moyer Jr. with me. As you're watching the WSSR Rosa Gems Cup Series, the Season 8 Championship Round, and a couple of drivers in that zone where we were seeing tire wear hurting drivers during the first run. Now in the second run, similar drivers having troubles. Jason Damer slipping and sliding, but he is still very far away, about another five to 10 laps from his next pit stop as drivers have already completed their first pit cycle and aims for their second pit cycle. Wait in the wings as this first championship round looks to be a dominance of Bryson Nixon Ball, Ryan Kelly, and Brian McCambi in your lead two drivers. Some drivers, though, caught with some pit road mistakes. If you're just joining us uh, in the likes of Douglas Newbig, caught with a black flag penalty of an unsafe pit entry. Christopher Norris had to pit for a second time after a speeding penalty off the exit. And drivers have yet to throw a yellow, but we might see it here as Ooh. Danny Cochran as well as Jason Tamer have been getting mixy and it's more so they're racing the car more than their competition around them. And at some moment, it feels like they're going to collide. And Robert uh, bringing you back in. These drivers have looked like this. It feels like almost all night and somehow 70 laps in. No caution. No caution yet, but you know. I don't know if you're trying to use that jinx word because we're really good at it, but right now these guys are not beating and banging, but they're slipping and sliding now because they got 30 laps on their tires now. Each one of these guys got 30 to 31 laps on their tires now, and this is when we've seen the cars starting to get, you know, wicked crazy and wicked loose and all over the place, Sam. Yeah, it's certainly all over the place and a constant trying to just save your machine going to the inside wall or the outside wall. Some drivers have already dealt with some damage. The likes of Danny Cochran, uh, also Anthony Gaudio, they've gotten into the outside wall a couple of times. Ollie Fonseca has gotten rear-ended once tonight, and they're just trying to, to hold steady while the other competition around you also tries to drive around you at the time. But oh, there it is. one driver, oh, speaking of contact, Tamer, Douglas Newbigin gonna make contact. The 81 keeps it straight. We stay green, but Wow. Damer is not a driver you want to get into a emotion there but that was a very close spill of a wreck and re-looking at it just looked like the 81 overcorrects, loses the car trouble for himself and in a very early pit stop gonna be for ollie fonseca in the pit road for the 24 machine oh. first driver to make the stop for the second cycle are they they, they're not ready for the second cycle yet, though, are they? I mean, technically, they could if they're going for 30, 30, 30. If you're going for four stops, okay. yes, you can make that work. But okay. I, I, I see the three stop being the best strategy. Two stops kind of risking the amount of time you're giving up, but a three stop seems a little out of here. But some drivers, again, go for a risky call and into pit road. We find Jason Tamer. I feel like also... Oliver Fonseca, Jason Tamer, those are two drivers that have been struggling with their tires here tonight. So they might need to just be forced for a four stop have an evening. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing there, Sam, because I was just ready to ask you, you know, we had some guys um, out here, you know, run around and want to take that, uh, you know, two stop you know strategy and then you have some that started with the three stop strategy them guys that did the two stop strategy do you think that's going to work out for them or do you think they're just going to have to bank on a yellow something happening to, to get them back into the game here 
Well, the only driver that truly made it to that mark was Nick Crawford right. in 16th place. And he's in 16th. He's back on the lead lap at least. But uh, I don't know if Crawford's going to make that work. And with the majority of the field not able to even make it to the halfway zone, it makes me a little bit slightly more concerned. But uh, like we were kind of talking about under commercial break, I mean, this series and a lot of the series we cover, when they have a, a first early long green flag run, there's always that high possibility of a late caution that comes out. And I was speaking about Larry Mack trends. It trends at this track at least one caution at every time they ran it at this racetrack as Bryson Hixenbaugh now hits it into pit road. Ken Campbell also going to be following in suit, but last uh, season here from season seven of the WSSR, they had one caution. All other races of the past uh, three after that had four cautions back in season five, four cautions for season four, and three for the inaugural Charlotte race in season two. So a lot, not, not a lot of cautions are thrown right. at this racetrack, but they know at least one maybe they're planning for it to be late in this race yeah right <clears throat> well you put that you put uh, this sam mack friend out there i just changed your last name i hope you don't mind um but uh, we got a uh, camera sort here entering pit road we got john forbes coming in entering pit road here now sam as we're going to keep cedric hunter out here running and larry uh, is uh, gonna stay out and lead a couple more laps here but yeah so well, we'll see how the trend goes here and see if we do get that one yellow or because we know if you get one yellow, there's probably going to be more yellows because yellows breed yellows. And especially here at IS, uh, IS sorry, uh, WSSR, you know, Roasted Jam Cup Series here. Um, the, the, the people get aggressive after a yellow because now it's all about getting spots. Yeah, they, they get aggressive, yeah. and also drivers are getting very aggressive on, on their pit entries. Some are getting very close to making contact with one another. And this middle of the cycle, when drivers are entering pit road, compared to those that have already made a pit stop and on faster tires and are just going, you know, anywhere from 10 to 20 miles per hour faster, you easily can get yourself in trouble uh, from time to time. Is Larry Yingling, Shane Terry going to be your top two currently waiting for when they're going to be hitting pit road. Gives us time to shout out our amazing sponsor, which is what all these drivers are hunting for. And that is Trophy Smack Trophies. Benjamin Elson grabbed his, got to hoist his first trophy last season for season seven. He's trying to grab his second trophy if possible. Larry Yingling, who leads tonight's race, got his own trophy smack ring. And if you'd like to get yourself your own championship ring, belt, trophy, or more, go head over to trophysmack.com. Go check out their wide selection of great items so you can go get pre-made trophies or you can customize them to your own liking. Again, go to trophysmack.com. And when you're purchasing, remember to use the promo code WSSRSMACK for 10% off on all purchases. Thank you so much to Trophy Smack for being the main sponsor for the WSSR Rosa Gems Cup Series as Larry Yingling still leads the way. Driver that's actually won this race twice. Uh, at the last four times we've been here, if you looked at those trends, you'd say he was the odds on favorite coming in two tonight, but kind of weird to see the three time champ kind of, I wouldn't say struggling, but just not as much dominance as we've seen in seasons past for the 67. Yeah, and it could be the car too. You know what I mean? Because, you know, you go to car to car and some, some vehicles fit others as we went three wide there for a second with Ken Campbell. But what, what I was getting to is, is that some people, some people just like other cars, Sam, you know, and, you know, they favor a certain car and can race another car, but not like it. You know what I mean? You can race it, but you're just not fast in it. Um, and that's, you know, iRacing does some kind of update that makes it mysterious feel good and all of a sudden it's like okay this car fits my driving style you know but um also real quick before you answer that stuff there um we have somebody out there uh wanting to know who the season uh, a way to find out who the season six championship is i know wssr has a website i do apologize i don't have it on hand um but it would be benjamin nelson that uh is your season six champion 
Well, no, I think he was looking to see who are the six people that are challenging oh. for the championship. Which okay, that would my be bad. The 15 of Ken Campbell, the 32 of Zach Paul, as well as the three of Ryan Kelly, the eight of Brian McCann, 79 of Benjamin Nelson, and the nine of Shane Terry. There are six drivers running for the championship. We were trying to get color coded yeah. uh, for the ticker. The colors have had the mind of their own, uh, so we actually had to take that away. Um, we hope to maybe have that in the future if we can get close to it on the, on the ticker prop <laughs> proper. But uh, <laughs> we will uh, we'll give you more rundown of who our six drivers yes. are. And currently, Larry Yingling runs in first, but Shane Terrian is the highest runner of our championship. Six drivers at this moment in second, but we're looking at drivers that we think that may win it that are our championship. Uh, six, I think Brian McCann yet to win this season. Probably should have won last week yeah. at uh, Kentucky, but with the timing of yellows, kind of took away that win he was hoping for. And uh, looking at Ryan Kelly, Kelly was going to be a favorite, but an issue under pit road. Oh, no. Ryan Kelly, black flag oh. held for the three machine. He is looking for a caution to get back into the mix. It is now a two-horse two race if we continue at this pace between Bryson Hixenbaugh and Brian McCann to see who can get the win here tonight as Shane Terrian hits pit road. Well, that's the thing. I said it at the beginning of the broadcast. Brian McCann doesn't have to get the win as long as he finishes in front of these guys, right, Sam? I mean, that that's a good sign to go into next week's last, last race. I mean, the more of these other championship guys, the other five guys that he's racing with, keep having issues and as long as he doesn't have an issue um he should look pretty good but he's not going to have a big points lead but still because you packed what 25 30 cars next week at the, the season finale you know if he finishes 30 he could lose the championship yeah and we look back to how the drivers had to race uh for the last season at kansas which is gonna be our last race next week that race we had a caution every 20 to 30 laps because of how much wear and tear the tires dealt with. I know there's been a lot of updates since then, but if we get a similar race like we had last season at Kansas, it could still be wide open on who mm -hmm. could even win this championship, even if you have a good night here this evening. But again, the way that the playoffs work, if you're just joining us for the first time watching the WSSR playoffs, originally with 16 drivers made it into the playoffs, we had ourselves three rounds to cut us to where we're at now with six uh, drivers running for the championship. Round of 16 had two races uh, where the drivers went to Darlington and Legacy Phoenix. Then we had a round of 11 after cutting our field from 16 to 11. We raced at Iowa and Legacy Kentucky last week. And now we are down to uh, our final six drivers that are running for a championship. They will all start basically at zero points uh, starting tonight and we'll see who has the most points after tonight's race at Charlotte and next week at Kansas to see who will take the season eight championship and also the bonus points the drivers are aiming for for tonight's run lead a lap get one bonus point lead the most laps get one bonus point the win in other leagues is, is a pretty big bonus point you can grab as well but it's only one bonus point here tonight as well so the drivers have a lot of bonus points to be grabbed it's a lot more on positioning Woo! and speaking of positioning in front of them trouble strikes for larry Art productions machine driver that's ollie fonseca another huge slip up for the 24 off the of turn four right in front of the leader too here now we got to be very careful here because he's been fighting that car all night sam and uh, it ain't the first time we've seen that car get, you know, a little sideways. So we'll have to see, uh, you know, if he can just keep that thing underneath him, which he has all race. As we got Shane Terrian looking down up underneath here. Now you got Bryson now going to, in that number 63, it's going to look underneath Ollie Fonseca. So he's going to make that. It looks like he's going to get him going into turn one. So, all right. Well, well, I mean, we're 91 laps into this thing. When do we start making other pit stops here very shortly? Because the window is open for these guys. It certainly is open. And for some drivers, they're entering pit road. And again, we have the drivers that originally were going for the free stop. They're still, most of those drivers are still in a very good window where they're not going to be pitting for another, let's say, 20 to maybe 25 laps. Drivers that are pitting now, Christopher Wade being one of them, they were not able to make it to lap 50. They are stuck in a horrible position where those drivers are going to have to pit around lap now of 92 and 
until around lap 98. That's going to be the window for the next, I would say, five to six pit stops, which those drivers to watch out for. It's going to be Brian P. Johnson in second at the Chris current moment, as well as uh, going to be watching Cody Reed in eighth. It's going to be having to hit pit road. And already he's hitting their pit stop is Benjamin Nelson, who wasn't able to make that march, nor Anthony Gaudio or Ali Fonseca. So some of these drivers in some odd positionings. But the one driver that's trying to turn this race into a two-stop, Nick Crawford, runs for in fifth place. Oh, somebody's just into the wall, too. Yeah, that was... That was Christopher Norris. Yeah, man, I heard it in my in my monitor right through my headset. He really smashed that, Sam. He really did, and that hit was so hard. He's got a required damage flag. Christopher Norris is now forced to go into pit road over the radio state that he needs to enter pit road in a race that goes from bad to worse for There's Norris as he's going to be going into pit road to get service done. And I believe Ooh. he's even got an engine damage. Clowers the wall there on that replay, but we want to stay on board with him because I believe he hits the wall again there, hits it off the exit of turn two, and then when entering pit road, gets caught speeding and hits the top wall, the uh, sand barrels on pit what? entry. Oh, there's into the wall again, like you said. It just goes from bad to worse for the circuit machine. He just could not stop the wall at this point. That whole entire front end, I think it was the toe length on the front end, was broken. And he's just trying to make it into pit road. And then he has the scare here slowing down. And on pit entry, just comes in too fast and slipping and sliding because he can't steer right. He oh. stays away from it, but he hits the wall on pit entry. <laughs> and that counts as an unsafe pit entry. And that's a 40 second hold on top of all the damage that he gets to deal with. Uh, he probably threw his hands up and just went away. <laughs> uh, yeah, he was not happy. I've got the driver audios and driver uh, talking, and he was very mad when he hit the pit wall and was given the black flag. Yeah. We go back to live coverage of this race. Currently, the, the field, a comfortable spot at this time. Again, pit stops for about three to four drivers. Still going to be aiming uh most likely hoping for a caution to come out to save some drivers. Others are waiting for this race to continue to stay clean and green. But Robert, as we inch closer, I think all eyes got to be on Nick Crawford. Can he get to lap 101? Mm. So 102 is the window he's looking for. Well, he's back here running in seventh position. And like you said, he's, that, that's his, uh, what he's looking for. So... I guess we'll see. I mean, he's probably already clutching it already if we would hop back in. He did it last time. We'll see if he's clutching it this time here, Sam. As we go down the back stretch, down into turn number three. Yeah, he's yep, clutching. We'll see that, that center marker, that tick dropping immediately. That's the sound of clutching. You also can hear it in your ear. The engine kind of sounded like it shuts it off, pushing in the clutch. And ways to save fuel for these drivers it's, oh my it's god one in many ways but certainly uh having a handful with how the car's feeling and trying to focus on saving fuel it's it's certainly a juggling act that we're seeing from the 74 right now yeah i mean we we talk about you know you struggle and going you know down the back stretch you know you're driving the car straight that's the that's the easy part, right? Then you get into the turns, for, you know, example like one and two, three and four. You know, you're gonna struggle exiting. The car's gonna get snapped and loose. But these guys are struggling going through the tri oval. The tri oval. Look look at that thing just get snappy going through the tri oval. I mean, that that's I, I'm just I'm flabbergasted right now in that Sam. I mean, from an outside perspective, yes, it can be difficult, but the, the travel is notoriously sneakily scary at moments, right, especially yeah. this late into a run. Uh, these vehicles are, are tough to handle. It kind of feels like you're slipping and sliding on ice, and you go through the first kink at, at through the quad oval, and you feel confident, and then you're trying to make sure you don't slide up into the outside wall, and with where the, these tires are at, you almost feel like you want to drift up to the wall to get that extra space to work with, but every lap, there's a slight crush fingers and hold on for dear life moment. But again, talking about drivers that are in a comfortable position, Nick Crawford, who's going for the two stop. He's already been passed. He's down to eighth place. And at this moment, if you wanted the two stop strategy to really work, he's got to gain a lot of time on these drivers that are going to be pitting within the next two to three laps. And Crawford is about 18, 19 seconds 
off of our leader, Bryson Hickson. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's a lot of work that Nick Crawford's going to get back in the lead, and he might need some luck to get the timings right for him to be the leader right when the yellow flag comes out. Oh, most definitely. I mean, right now what you're seeing is he's so far behind. You know, he's going to go and get fresh tires. He can't run it, you know, you know, extremely nuts because you're going to burn off them tires then, you know, within the next 30 laps. That leaves you with 20 laps to go. So, I mean, even now he's down to 15 laps to go. If he would run it hard, he's just, it's just not enough of time. The tires, the tire fall off is more than what you're going to gain. But Nick Crocker did get to that window he was looking for, which was around lap 101 to 102. So he'll take that good grace. Great battle going on, though, for our fifth place position. I uh, mean, fourth place, excuse me. That's going to be Cameron Sarn and Cedric Hunter. They've been on top of one another for a while. And talking about our championship six drivers here, Robert, Cedric mm -hmm. obviously just missing out of making the championship six as he was the highest runner, missed out by two points from uh -huh. moving on and being a championship driver. And uh, those close margins always going to be hurting you. But this 13, a driver that's won here at Charlotte in the past, may need a little bit of help if he wants a chance to win. But I'm impressed with what we're seeing from this 13 that really had. Yes, he made it to the playoffs. Yes, he made it to round 11. But it has been a struggle of season for Cedric. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, you're right, Sam. It's been a struggle um, from, from, yeah, I mean, he made it to the playoffs, like you said. Um, he had a great season and made it to the playoffs. But, you know, it just it just it's not all there for him i we know cedric we've seen cedric you know here at freaky fast we personally know him we know he's a fast driver we know he's got the talent to do it we've seen him get race wins um i'm just i'm excited you know it's not changing the subject but kind of is i'm excited for seeing next season season number eight when they go to the next gen cars who's going to rise to the cream of the crop who's going to stay in the middle and who's going to fall right because we're going to a whole new car and and i just I'm, I'm excited sam i know we got one more race to go to finalize the champion here but season eight, I think, is going to be a blast where we're going to see comers and we're going to see goers. Yeah, next season, season nine is going to be a, a very oh, good season to watch. Oh, I just I want to do eight tonight. again. I know. It's the season eight championship round. The eight's in the, out there. The eight's fast out on track. Eight's just the yeah. number out there tonight. Uh, but for these drivers, yeah, next season, uh, I got a preview of what the upcoming schedule is going to look like. Yeah. And you did too, Robert. We're not going to share it. But it nope. is the most bizarre schedule. Oh. I think these drivers, the first eight la eight races of next season, uh, none of them are, are what you traditionally see for racetracks. Uh, Not for even. Schedule. Not even It's going to be a tough one. Uh, I think drivers that are willing to adapt to the new car and the tracks we're going to, they're going to have the most success. Uh, next season certainly going to be an eye-opening season for some of these drivers as this is again the second to last race of the season the first race of the championship round right now it's bryson hickson trying to go for his second win of the season the 63 has been quick up front behind them is brian mccann and the eight machine and as we're watching also this anthony gadio and zach hall battle this is for 12th place a window of a driver that we talked about at the start of the broadcast how is Ken Campbell in third position? The Cinderella story, the driver that's been <laughs> under the radar all season long. We barely talk about Ken, it feels like, most weeks. He's in third place here tonight. This is one of his better runs of the season. Yeah, maybe we should stop talking about him. I mean, that's what's got him here, it feels like. <laughs> okay. Oh. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, we have to talk about him. Yeah. I mean, he is one of our championship six contenders. It's, All right, well, Ken, we I, I, try, I tried, Ken, I tried. Hey, I've been trying to work my, uh, you could call it voodoo magic of, of commentator's curse <laughs> all race long. We're 110 laps in. If you're just joining us, we've had zero ca zero caution so far. Blinking issues for the three oh, in front of that. Johnson and Ken, <laughs> Ken Campbell seeing all the lap cars around him at this moment, and none of them are for position uh, for the 15. Just trying to figure out how do I slide around all the Fonseca while watching the other drivers race. This 24 has been having trouble here tonight. 
Let's go down low. And this is a uh, crush fingers hope for the best moment as the 15 and the 24 get side by side off the exit of turn number four. And they make it through as Ken Campbell tries to continue his way forward. Yeah, he continued his way forward. Now he's past my, I, oh my, all he is. <laughs> I don't know how he's. I don't know how he's keeping this car underneath him, Sam. I mean, we're gonna have a spotlight driver. I think he needs to be the spotlight driver. Well, I mean, it's just this car in general. It's the the Gen Four. Is how do you control a car that basically it's was evil. fighting you at every moment, and you have to figure out how to keep it straight while it's kinking out sideways and carrying as much speed as possible as you're sideways. That's just what the Gen Four has been for this season yeah. and last season, and. Uh, certainly these drivers that have been here running in season seven to season eight, they've gotten that experience and they're able to just hold on to dear yeah. life for, for some others. They're moving fast and Christopher Wade having a little bit of a scare behind as we were watching uh, these drivers as Wade, Cody Reed, Cedric Connor all on top of one another as we get ourselves prepared. The final pit stops are underway as drivers hit pit road, Ryan Kelly's gonna make his stop. Ken Campbell, Larry Yingling. This is the money stop for drivers are going for the three stop strategy. Yeah, three stop strategy and they played it all out and here they go. They're all gonna enter into pit road here and now we're gonna wait to see here what Bryson does here, because he's on uh, lap number 36. You got Brian McCann going on lap 37. Cedric Hunter is going to be on lap 35. You got Cameron Sarton here running in fourth position on lap 36. So, you know, you got John Forbes on uh, lap, what, 36 here. And then you got Shane Terry on lap 27. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, it was 27 laps ago. Those were how many laps ago these drivers were in pit road that Robert was just running yeah. down and waiting for when they're going to make their stops. Cedric Hunter, the most recent one. Douglas Newbegin as well. Two laps down is that seven. I know his struggles here tonight. Another one of five, six drivers you could write down and note that are needing a caution fly to come out once this pit cycle is concluded. But Bryson Hicksonbach continues to stay out as long as possible. Brian McCann now hits pit road and for Hicksonbach over the radio, he is pitting this time by for the 63. And this should be gifting the lead to Cameron Sark in the 99 machine. To see Bryson Hickson, Bob, we already saw nice. one of our top three contenders have a bad pit stop of getting a black flag, but Bryson smooth hits his marks. And that is a clean entry. Not expecting a black flag for that 63. No, no. And now we're going to watch two other drivers come down pit road as one locks it up there as Ollie Fonseca. We got Cameron Sarton making their pit stop. So everybody's uh, making their pit stops here, Sam. It looks like uh, who, who, okay, John Forbes is coming in. Who else have we got entering pit road here? Danny Cochran's coming in. Who's staying out? Nope, James Heater. Oh, almost hit the wall for James. Almost hit the wall, still out. It's Shane Tarion, also Benjamin Nelson. Bryson Hickson Ball is going to be already leaving pit road and leaving pit road. He's slotted inside of the top 10, it looks to be for the 63. That's just how far ahead Bryson was over his competition. And this is kind of a similar run. I'm looking at Bryson and the way he's running here tonight at Charlotte. Uh, a little deja vu to his a debut race in the middle of the season at Las Vegas is how he won, was taking it slow, letting other drivers kind of be the pace setters for the first stint. And then Bryson, second pit stop, took the lead and never looked back. And he is doing a very similar run here at Charlotte. As now the leader, Shane Terry, and when will we see the nine make his pit stop? Benjamin Nelson in second, and both these drivers did not qualify well. Both qualified outside of the top 20 coming into tonight's race, and a miracle might be needed. Uh, they both have great pace to run up front. Just the qualifying run really set these drivers so far back for the 9 and the 79. That it did. That it did, Sam. So I think what they need to do for them, too, for the 9 and the 79 is just run this out now and, uh, you know, try to bank on the yellow um, and just see how far you can go. As long as you can control the car and keep the car going forward, which they have all race here, just you might as well just run it out until you run out of fuel or get really close to it. And, you know, like I said, hopefully a yellow comes out. 
are open for the best. Uh, Nick Crawford, who's kind of been our control car of if a driver went for a two-stop strategy run, he's already fallen down to ninth place. I know there's about four or five drivers that still need to pit in front of the 74, but uh, Nick Crawford, I don't know if he's even going to get a top 10 finish with the pace I'm seeing of drivers around uh, Crawford at this moment. Zingling will move up to eighth, pushing Nick Crawford back in ninth, and Cedric Hunter in the wings waiting to make pass. Same for Christopher Wade. Uh, it's uh, it's it's going everywhere. Uh, it's going everywhere in the wrong direction, you could say, for the 74. Yeah. But you know what? I got to give these guys credit here, though. Um, we've been trying to do the voodoo and do it with everything and poke dolls and all that stuff. And uh, these guys kept it clean and green here, Sam. I mean, it's been, it, yeah, the field's pretty well spread out. And we're, we're looking for things to talk about. But overall, it's it's been a really great race. It's been a fantastic race. This is kind of giving flashbacks to uh, last season. This is what we saw almost all of last season for the WSSR was a lot of green flag racing uh, decisions of you go for the two stop and the three stop strategy which one was going to be the faster and this is exactly what we thought this whole entire uh, season eight was going to be like uh, it was not the case first half of the season was uh, a very bad mark <laughs> for the league a lot of people were frustrated mad a lot of cautions were happening but they really cleaned it up from about halfway through the regular season to now and Tonight is honestly the shining star of the season with how well they have been running. And Bryson Hixenbaugh, rookie driver this season that leads the way. Brian McCann in the eight runs in second. McCann, great run for himself, trying to maximize on his points as Ben Campbell, our other championship running driver. Looks like a third place finish. What he's aiming for as Benjamin Nelson and Brian P. Johnson, both in a position where they need to pit to, uh, to make it to the end of tonight's race. And that's shocking, like you said there, with uh, Brian, uh, not Brian, uh, Benjamin, um, you know. We're so used to seeing him up front battling for the lead, going for the wins and everything. And uh, here tonight, unfortunately, the cards ain't going to shuffle in his hands the way he needs them. And he's just going to wind up finishing where he finishes here tonight. It's just, uh, it's just not used to seeing. And that just goes to show you, you know, like you said, qualifying. That That, that is... That is such a killer, um, you know, to, to, to make up going from the back to the front. It's very, very, very hard um, to, to do it. And drivers that can do it or have done it, uh, you know, everything falls in their cards, in their, you know, in their hands. Um, and some luck, you know, comes that way too. That's why we always stress about drivers out there that say, I want to start in pit road. That's... That's not league racing, right, Sam? I mean, you do that in open server, that's fine. But when it comes to league racing, you should be putting down a qualifying lap. Even if it's slow, at least you gave it a shot. Uh, yeah, uh, I think putting down a qualifying time is always needed. Uh, I know for Ben, he was just, he made mistakes during yeah. qualifying to set him back. But the big thing that hurt Ben for this race is uh, that first pit stop we, we still never were given the exact reasoning on why the 79 lost so much time yeah. but he was inside of our top 10 when that pit cycle began and he fell to being a, almost a full lap down and went from being up inside of i think he was seventh at the time of our first pit stops to 23rd it just never was able to recover back in that moment and it's been a, a ruler to, to rebound and he's going to be one of those drivers that have pit stop strategy issues happen ryan kelly also caught with a black flag and the ryan p johnson just couldn't save the fuel for the 28 in a spot where he's going to be about three to four laps shy from making it to the end of this race even with saving fuel it is uh ryan's going to need an absolute miracle at this moment as late pit stops underway christopher wade into pit road as well as christopher norris might be calling it tonight we want to say thank you again to our amazing sponsors here for the WSSR Rosa Gems Cup Series. A major sponsor that is going to be allowing these drivers to hoist the trophy for season eight and also help with season, season seven, Trophy Smack. Trophy, trophy Smack has a wide range of pre-made and as well what you can customize, trophies and championship belts, rings, trophies, and more. You might be wondering what that more is. Well, it's called a wall smack. It's a metal plate that you can put on your wall with their safe uh, wall safe magnet mounting system. 
allows you to post on your wall if you'd like to have your wall smacked there, which would be a custom image of your choice that you place. Or if you'd like, just in a few months ago, is there stand to allow you to place your wall smack on your desk, on a shelf, wherever you would like. Remember, when purchasing your wall smack or any other trophy from trophysmack.com, use the promo code WSSR Smack for 10% off. As we're in the final push of tonight's race, Robert, it is uh, it's crunch time for drivers here this evening. If you're making a late pit stop, you're running as aggressively as you can to grab all these positions back. But if you're Bryson Hicks and Bob, Brian McCann, Ken Campbell, it's settle in, hope for the best. But I'm looking for that battle for third. There are some drivers that are going to be very hungry for a top three finish. And it's the 13 of Cedric Hunter trying to run down Ken Campbell while Campbell's being really hounded by lap traffic. But Cedric Hunter has not been on an interview for WSSR for a while. And I know that's something that he's been irking about. He thought he was going to finally get that interview as we had issues during Phoenix a couple of weeks ago. And uh, we were not able to do interviews during that race. But this 13... Here tonight, just a second away from third place where he'll be automatically placed in that position to have an interview. And I'd imagine Cedric's putting everything down to try to go for a top three finish here tonight with 20 laps to go. Yeah, he's like a kid in a candy store for it, right, Tim? He's like, you know, me, pick me, pick me, pick me, pick me. We got about like eight drivers that are like that. With our, <laughs> our, we, we, we try to be as open to picking a lot of different drivers, not the same guys over and over again, but there's some drivers that are always like, you know, it has to be me every weekend. <laughs> right, right, yeah, I wanna be the spotlight guy. Look at me go. Oh, uh, some people like interviews, other drivers don't. We gotta, we gotta pick on all of them fairly at this time as Hunter is still less than a second away now. Gonna be about eight tenths off of Ken Campbell for third place, and Campbell wants every point possible the 15 wants to make sure that he's got the smallest gap that he has to worry about going into next week's race at Kansas. Again, this is the first race of this championship round. Only two races for this round. Whoever has the most points uh, during tonight's race combined with next week's race will take the season eight championship. Ryan McCann of the eight machine is our lead championship six driver in second position. Ken Campbell is in third and then we fall down to eighth place where Benjamin Nelson is, but Nelson's entering pit road. So he's gonna be giving up all the time positioning from 79. And then we look at our next closest driver, that's Shane Tearing in the nine machine. He's just moved up to 10th, now make it ninth, as he's gotten by Nelson. Other championship drivers of note, Zach Hall down in 14th place, and Ryan Kelly, who had pit stop issues, the three is down in 18th position. A lot of other drivers here tonight, we're hoping for better runs that are not in the playoffs, but it's Bryson Hickson by the rookie. That's the shining star here tonight. It's the laps continue to tick down, trying to go for his second win of the season is the 63 as Shane Tarion. He's got the freshest tires of everyone inside of our top 10, and he's gonna be trying to grasp at every position possible until this race is done. Yeah, there he goes, Superman. But yeah, he's got the freshest tires and you can just see the difference in speed, so we'll see where he's going to wind up, at, you know, here at, by the end of the race here, uh, Sam, you know, with 16 laps to go, but yeah, I mean, and I'm watching, I'm just sitting here watching the ticker between Ken and, and Cedric Hunter, and Cedric Hunter is slowly, slowly catching Ken Campbell, um, so we'll see where that all, you know, divvies out by the end of the race, but you know what's going to be very interesting here, you know, next week, Sam, going into the race, we're going to have the points from tonight, and we're going to be able to see, okay, how many cars show up, and we can start adding points up and saying this driver needs to finish in this position, in that position, in this position, because, you know, this is what you get for leading a lap, the most laps, and things like that. So make sure you tune in next week for the final, final race. Um, here at uh, WSSR, brought to you by Roasted Gems uh, Coffee. But yeah, you know, um, it's gonna be interesting, man. It certainly will be in, in this uh, dynamic of having two races for this championship round and the amount of points for those two races gives you the championship. Very different from other series. It's either you go with a full chase format where all playoff drivers are gonna have a five to 10 race window to, to see who gets the most points during that section 
of races, or you have a full elimination playoff bracket where you eliminate drivers after two races, and then you just have the one race of whoever finishes the highest wins the championship. This is a very unique series on how they're doing the championship, and I, I enjoy it because it kind of adds an element of who can be the most consistent late in the season, who's got that clutch factor. It's not just one race. Uh, if you have a bad race, you're out of the championship hunt, and you have to be consistent for two. And tonight's been a kind and nice run as we've been caution-free so far. But everyone knows, especially with how these last couple of weeks have gone down, just, uh, you know, you get to that window, closer and closer to the white flag, you start to feel that tensity of a late caution is just looming around the corner. Yeah, it could be looming, but I'm now watching here Shane Carrion. He is uh, running a second faster than Brian Johnson. Um, so he is now about three seconds behind him. He's going to catch Brian Johnson for seventh position by the end of this race. I, I think Shane's got a good chance catching Brian. Uh, catching up to uh, Cam might be a little bit tougher of a window to close in because he's going to then close in by over uh, a total of seven to eight seconds right. uh, to catch up to Cameron starting. So it's, it's going to be a tough window to get to, but still a lot of work for Shane. But what's going to assist them is the fact that Cameron Sarton is still running very close to Larry Gingling. Those drivers have been on top of one another for a good amount of this stint. And the battle for thirds about to be ramping up. Yeah. As Ken Campbell, Cedric Hunter, they are now on top of one another, and they also have a driver in between. That's Mason Cassidy in the four. That's uh, the lap car. We'll see how much of a buffer the four machine wants to be for uh, can't for the likes of Ken Campbell, or will the four just get out of the way and let our lead lap drivers battle it out for position? Oh, we'll have to see what Mason Cassidy does because we know right now running in that wake air, or dirty air is what we want to call it, you know, is not helping Cedric Hunter. That one that's only burning them tires off a little bit more, burning behind him, but, you know, as, I, oh, Kaufman is all over the place. And Kaufman getting a little bit loose off of turn two. He was saving it all the way through the back stretch, but uh, a quick scare, but keeps it together. It's the field, uh, Everyone's struggling. It was, we haven't had a caution to really reset at any of these drivers. We've been clean and green since the drop of, of the start of this race. And everyone having that mental lapse in these final nine laps of tonight's race. As everyone's trying to keep it together at this moment. But one driver that's having some slight issues is going to be Nick Crawford, who got into the outside wall. The one driver going for the two stop. Got on the outside wall at the exit of turn four. Um, and he is very slow, dealing with some damage now that he does not want to be dealing with. And seven four continues to fall off as some drivers are happy to see mistakes happen. Zach Hall able to make a pass on Nick Crawford and now going to be seeing the 32 as well as the 77. This is four position 11 for Zach Hall as he's also trying to figure out how to get himself back onto the lead lap as Hall is the first driver one lap down with the leader right in front of him. Oh, well, it'd be nice to be get back on the lead lap, but you know, he also got the lucky dog, like you said. So do you push the issue to pass, pass the 63 with seven laps to go? I would say not, but that's just the type of driver I am, um, you know, but I, I wouldn't do it. I'd just ride there unless he, you know, it, you know, Bryson passes another car and then that car's, a, a, you know, the lucky dog then I would push it a little bit more, but I would just settle and ride. I mean, you can't really settle and ride, and you got your, your racing for position with 7-7 behind you. I think that's more so of the factor Zach's worried about than Bryson at this moment. 32 continues to just fight back on Brian Lowell. He continues to just settle. Drivers do hit pit road. Cody Reed not able to make it to the end of the race. 52 will make his stop. We're also still leading for Brian P. Johnson to make his final stop, who runs in eighth place. We do not believe that Brian will be able to make it to the end of this run, but he's going to try his darndest to push his fuel as far as he can go. As the field continues to roar on, some other close battles for position is Anthony Gaudio getting by Nick Crawford. Again, Crawford continues to fall, and there's your late yellow. Caution oh, flag is no. out as James Kaufman on the front stretch wreck. 
happens, and we are going to be going, I believe, to overtime. Oh, no. Uh, oh, no. It is the right <laughs> phrasing to use. As Kaufman, as well as I believe that was the 99 of Cameron Sarton, got into one another on the front stretch after Kaufman had issues off the exit of turn four, and this is not good. No, it is not, Sam. Caution free race gone. You called the trends. One caution, and here it is, ladies and gentlemen, as what? Kaufman, Kaufman just throttles it up. Right oh, in the oh my and God. Then he turns it right into Cameron Sarton. What the beep was that? Uh, well, <laughs> they say it. That was a Kaufman moment. <laughs> oh my God. It's just what it was. It was a, mo a moment where you're late in a race, talk about mental fatigue, and James Kaufman have him in a moment where he breaks loose who was that cranks that and it's gonna be cameron sarton 99 and it's just kaufman throttles oh. up and if, if we go back again and do a ride along with james kaufman and see his steering wheel inputs he was already snapping loose gotta find and his name he's down in 24th position currently it's kaufman Cockpit. See, the big thing here is when he gasses it up, he figures that he's going to be all right. He just hammers it down. I don't know why he hammers it down and, and just. Might have went back too far. Had his, uh, oh, here we go. Almost. All right, let me go. Let me go back here. Give me one second, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> You're gonna see here, breaks loose, slams on the brakes, trying to make sure he doesn't get caught up in a wreck, slows down, and then you listen into his throttle input, just slams it down while he's pointing it to the right, and just shoves his car out right in front of oncoming traffic, and then Cameron Sarge just had no way to react to that incident. It's just a bizarre moment to have James Coffin have that wreck late, and we would have stayed green. Till this moment where 25 just shoots up in front of the 99. All right, well, we'll go back live here, but you know, my question is, is, um, you know, I, I get, give him credit that he got loose, right? And he saved it. Um, but your tires are worn down, Sam. Why would you gas it up like that? You know, you're not gonna have no grip. You've been, everybody's struggling after 30 laps. You know, all you're doing is just spinning the wheels on ice, basically. I'm just going to keep my mouth shut and not say I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I wish I could understand, but we will not know why. Um, a lot of questions are going to be thrown out, and I don't think we're ever going to get answers on no, this but... actual reason why. And, you know, we can throw hypotheticals out. We, yep. we could try, you know, to do our best, but we're just going to try to change it around, look at a different aspect of this, and that's the fact uh, that I we are in overtime. Roll. We are in overtime for this race. <laughs> um, as you're the boss man, I'll let you go free reign if you, but I'm not going to go free. <laughs> what? No, I'm good. I dropped the Tootsie Roll. Uh, so for this race, for this, with the timing of that caution, it was coming to six laps to go. So we're going to reset now. We are officially in overtime, ladies and gentlemen. We have three attempts if needed. Drivers just got done with having their pit stops. Currently, drivers are were able to go into pit road to get service done. Is our top 11 drivers. That will be Bryson Hicksonbaugh, Brian McCann, Ken Campbell, Cedric Hunter, Larry Yingling, Shane Terrian, John Forbes, Brian P. Johnson, Danny Cochran, Zach Hall, and Cameron Sarton. Drivers that are going to be taking the wave around. They're going to be on older tires, but will be trying to stay out on track track to get back on the lead lap be brian noel nick crawford james heater uh as well as ryan kelly benjamin nelson christopher wade and douglas newbiggy those drivers that are taking the wave around will be getting back on the lead lap but they're going to be on 30 plus old tires crawford scariest position doesn't even know if he's gonna have enough fuel to make it to the end of this restart oh no uh, let alone the end of this race 
uh, already is asking for an EOL is going to be Nick Crawford. So he'll be at the very end of the line. Does We do not have to worry about him now uh, being involved with the wreck here. But for this field, it's going to be two laps to go. If we take the green and get a caution on our first lap, these drivers will then go into overtime attempt number two. But if we get the white flag, this race becomes official. And it's all about who crosses the line first. Bryson Hicksonbaugh took two tires. John Forbes took two tires. The 99 of Cameron, uh, Cameron Sarton was going to be starting on the inside row right in front of Zach Hall, dealing with major front end damage and might be dealing with engine damage. Still going to be out there on track. And on the outside, James Kaufman also going to be dealing with damage. So there's drivers that are dealing with some wounded vehicles out there on track. Can we stay green for our first attempt at overtime? Let's find out. Championship race number one of two for season eight is back underway as they hit the throttle pedal bryson hicksonbaugh brian mccann they take oh. off but ken campbell mischiefs the 15 what a slouch that he was hoping for goes up in smoke he's going backwards other drivers are struggling to get going it's our top four but they're wrecking through one and we're going to overtime attempt number two. Oh boy and looking back trying to find the catalyst of where this all happened. It was really the whole entire log jam of the inside. Ken Campbell had a misfire on the start of the race. Looks like John Forbes also had a misfire in Forbes and Danny Cochran made contact, which then it sent the two going backwards. And from there, Cameron Sarton and Danny Cochran got into one another. The two watch out as he falls back. The two machines gonna get spun by the 99 right in front of the field oh okay but it's it's a couple of well <laughs> we're, we're making some big moves type of moments for drivers and here you go oh and kaufman didn't have nowhere to go he unfortunately got involved it was just a, a small little tap for himself as I'd say don't touch my car oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of guys would be thinking that <laughs> but with drivers having you know not the best launches for themselves it changes changes up a running order and this also enables all those drivers that took the uh wave around the driver that actually is going to be gifted a, a chance to go into pit road Cameron Sarton uh after getting uh the nose of the 22 uh off spinning the two off of the nose of the 99 he'll be going into pit road and about eight other drivers gonna get fresh rubber for this restart but uh ken campbell losing a lot of time on that restart as well as john forbes forbes makes sense uh on why he went backwards took two tires under his piss uh last pit stop so he was mm -hmm. on a little bit more worn down tires uh bryson hicksonbaugh also took two tires he will not be the control vehicle for this restart that is goes to brian mccann in the eight machine yeah, and you've seen a difference in four tires compared to two tires there, you know, because now we've got Brian McCann leading this race over Bryson, and Bryson lost it going into turn number one there, Sam. Yeah, and with all the other drivers having issues, Cedric Hunter now slots himself up into third place. Fourth is now Shane Tarian. Ken Campbell's going to fall back to fifth, and other playoff contenders zach hall now instead of the top 10 ryan kelly's back on the lead lap gonna be starting in 10th place with the freshest of tires of anyone now it looks gonna be pretty equal of everyone else now because we didn't get a long green flag run there with that restart but the rest of the field still stacked side by side just waiting for those pace car lights to turn off and we'll give it another try for attempt number yeah. two of three at overtime. I tell you, this is a rebound for a lot of these playoff drivers that were having issues, you know, from the beginning of the race and the middle of the race there, Sam. They are now back into the playing game. Even if you don't win, just get the maximum points that you can. I can't stress that enough that you don't need to win. You don't need it. But you want it <laughs> that's oh yeah the, that's race the problem. Car driver. They're, they're race car drivers yeah th th their mindsets are never big picture it, unless you have a crew chief or a spotter that's giving you live information and then sometimes you won't make some uh, you know big moves that may or may not get you in trouble right uh, but if you've got someone in your ear telling you hey you're in a good spot we're, we're aiming for this position let's just at least try to get a, a top three let's at least try to get a top five 
kind of can allow the drivers to get a little bit more looser. So maybe they can make some bigger moves that give them a better option. But again, you're aiming for at least the top five. Do you want a good chance to go for that championship next week? Top 10, still in a window. Anything outside yeah. of a top 10, if you're inside of our, if you're our championship six, is a miserable run yeah. heading into Kansas next week. Yeah, because then you're looking at other cars going to have to have issues, right? I mean, the other five drivers that you're racing against have to have issues and then you probably have to get all the bonus points and lead all the laps which is you know highly doubted that that that's going to happen you know with the with the strength of the field and how how these drivers are here you know anybody in this field can win a race here so you know banking on something like that uh yeah no you don't you don't want to go there yeah absolutely not as Looking at where our championship six drivers are going into this next and what potentially could be your last restart of the night. You have our leader of Brian McCann. He's one of our championships drivers in first. In fourth, we find Shane Tarion in the nine machine. In fifth, we find Ken Campbell. Uh, we drop all the way down to ninth place. That's where we find Zach Hall. Tenth is where we find Ryan Kelly. And you have to go all the way down to around 16th. Where Benjamin Nelson finds himself being lied. A lot of work needs to be done for Nelson to get back into this fight. But if anyone could do it, most likely would be him. But the field oh. is getting ready to go green. No so we're actually going to extend it one more lap just to make sure everyone's in the right position. That just makes it more intense. Uh, so, well, anyways, how's everybody doing out there in chat? We didn't really get to talk to too many people out there. Thank you, uh, everybody that has tuned in or have tuned in or going to watch this later. We do much appreciate it. Make sure if you see something out there that you like, use that clip button on your phone or also if you're on your la laptop or computer, there's a little clip button that you can use and clip your favorite highlights and uh, save it. And then you can share that clip out. And what it also does, which me and Sam figured out, is, is when somebody clips it, we can go back and look at that clip and maybe we take the clip that you liked and we can make it into a short and post it on our TikTok and YouTube as a short and, you know, a little bit of help from the community helps the channel grow, right? Uh, that's the ultimate goal because if we grow, we get more viewers on our races, the more that it grows for the leagues as well. And the league, is, uh, if they have more eyes on board, they're able to get more sponsors and just overall helps the ecosystem Correct. that we're a part of here in sim racing and getting to see these drivers. And make sure you water the, the flowers. <laughs> Sorry. This is the most random thing. I was trying to make the connection. I just couldn't. What? <laughs> yeah, a, yeah, well, you said eco, and all of a sudden my brain went to flowers because it's springtime. <laughs> I don't know. Well, folks, if you're just joining us again, this is our second attempt at overtime. We have three if needed. Overtime attempt number three has slightly different rules than our first and second attempt. Got a quick caution on our first attempt overtime and a turn one incident. Wheel spin was a major factor for that wreck. We've only had two cautions here during the whole entire race. It was with seven laps to go. And then just when we had our first overtime attempt restart. But if when we go green, we get a wreck on the first lap, we go into overtime attempt number three. But if we stay clean and green and tell the white flag, this race becomes official and it's all about who gets into victory lane and crosses that line first. Here we go into the restart zone. Race one of the championship round for season eight is back underway. Brian McCann goes with a little bit of more of a delayed restart. Oh, and oh no, trouble. Bryson Hickson ball gets sent into the outside wall. Then 63 did not get going. It hurts Shane Tarion, but McCann's gone. Cedric Hunter is moving forward. Ken Campbell's back to third, but Shane Tarion's trying to recover. Oh my goodness. Hang on, ladies and gentlemen. And here comes Shane Tarion. He's going to look on the inside, outside actually here of Ken Campbell. And then you got Brian Johnson going to look Larry. Don't don't put him out here. But right now, if you can get uh, Brian McCann here across the start finish line here, Sam, we should. Oh, and Shane Tarion and Ken Campbell getting each other. They get into one another with the cross the line. That's official. This race is we make the white flag a roast. Jam's white flag is out. McCann pull away. Hunter comfortable in second. Ken Campbell might have been a quick little shove and it pushes the nine back to fifth where he battles Larry Yingling. But Brian McCann 
Oh, you saw all his other competition here tonight had mistakes or get moved out of the way. But the eight, after thinking last week was going to be his first win, it's the first race of the championship round wow. where McCann finally gets into victory lane. Wow. He finally got it. You know, like you said, last week, that should have been his until that late break yellow last week. And uh, John Forbes... Uh, Jumped the start and did get the win, but unfortunately got penalized for it. But congratulations, Brian McCann. He finally, 17 weeks, Sam, 17 weeks, he finally gets in victory lane. I mean, there have been two, three, four different races where you thought Brian McCann was finally going to cross over that edge. And in the championship round to get that first win after how competitive this eight machine has been all season, this has got to be feeling good for Brian McCann. What a run for himself here tonight. Again, talk about his other competition. Bryson Hicksonbaugh was restarting in second. He falls all the way down to 17th. Ryan Kelly, who at one moment was a major factor for a win here tonight, he'll finish sixth. But the eight machine of Brian McCann will come out of tonight with the most points heading into the championship race next week. Got to watch you. How's this eight machine going to recover? But for us, we will step away. When we come back, we'll talk to our top three and a spotlight driver right after this. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the post-race show for the WSSR Rosa Gems Cup Series Season 8 Championship Race, race one of two. And tonight, one of our championship six drivers gets a win this evening, and it goes to the eight machine of Brian McCann. Brian, congratulations on this win. Does this feel like a little bit of redemption in a way after how last week's race finished? How we thought you were finally going to get that win this season, and then you finally get it here tonight with a little bit of luck and a lot of skill at the end. 
Heck yeah, man. Feels great. First win of the season and doing it right when I need to do it. And uh, there were some other fastest drivers out there, but man, I don't know what they had in their car. I didn't have nothing for them, but we got lucky at the end, uh, pit strategy. And uh, I kind of didn't want that caution to come out, but now that it did and it ended up the way it did. And man, that's awesome. Yeah, I think everyone thinking that same way of that caution coming out late. But with this win, the way we're running here tonight, I believe you will exit out with the most points after tonight's race. How does that make you feel knowing you got a slight buffer going into the final race of the season at Kansas next week? Uh, so I'm sitting in the best position, but I got a big target on my back. So it's kind of, a, I don't know, catch 22 there. It certainly does. Well, Going into next week, Kansas, um, I know last season it was a dramatic race for the whole entire league as a whole. What are your thoughts going and having Kansas as the final race of the season? I like Kansas. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the new one or, yeah, it looks like the new one, so not the legacy. Um, I have pretty good experience on it. I'll have to uh, practice, of course, because um, the competition out here is strong. <laughs> There's two cars out here, obviously, much faster than I was, so I got to figure out what they were doing. <laughs> Well, we cannot wait to see what you find out next week, Brian. Congratulations on this win. Enjoy it. Uh, and uh, before we let you go, the floor is now yours for any more shout outs. Yeah, um, I'd like to thank my family, my spotter, Repeat1975. Check them out on all the social medias. Um, you guys for doing the broadcast, man. Amazing job on the broadcast. League admins for putting this show on. They do a lot of work behind the scenes. Um, race control, keeping an eye on us. You know, he's he's busy up there tonight. And uh our sponsors that make this happen and the drivers for coming out here and making it a fun, awesome time every week. Thank you. Well, they entered into this race equal, but a leave Charlotte as Brian McCann will be the points leader and Victor tonight. Congratulations, Brian. Enjoy this and good luck next week at Kansas. Thank you. See you. As we move away from victory lane, we go down into second place to see if we can talk to the 13 at Cedric Hunter. Weren't able to talk to him a few weeks ago at Phoenix, but finally for WSSR, Cedric, it's good to see you. Second place. I mean, with those last couple of cautions, did you think second place was even possible for yourself? No, nah, I mean, I, I knew the, the restarts were going to be like, um, uh, they're going to have a lot of wheel spin, and I don't necessarily have the best track record when it comes to, you know, uh, spinning the tires. So. Uh, I had honestly no expectations going to last. Like I could have ended on the tow truck and, uh, you know, that would have kind of been expected, but I'll take a P2. I mean, I would have preferred one position better, but uh, um, there was no way I was going to catch McCann there at the end. He was really, really fast. Him and Bryson were just lights out all night. Um, I think if the race would have went green, th there's a chance maybe if Ken makes a mistake or, or something that I might get a third place, but um it was a really good race. The cars were super, super hard to drive tonight. Um, they were pretty much on the edge uh, of wrecking in every single corner. So uh, it was a lot of fun. It was kind of a mix that, that you know, we, we didn't get to see that that much in the last few months. I would say, like, the setups have always been on the tighter side. Um, so it's a good change of pace. And um, hopefully going to Kansas, we kind of get to experience that again. Uh, well, speaking of Kansas, it was a very chaotic race last season with the way tire wear was influencing that race and racetrack. How is it knowing that you're going into that type of a racetrack? And even tonight, running around your competition that are of our championship six, knowing how much pressure they're dealing with while you're trying to get the best finishes you can at the end of the season. Yeah, it's tough because, I mean, I mean, like we saw tonight, like the, the thing was so hard to drive that like every time I got near somebody, um, like the last thing I want to do is obviously – give them a you know the door or, or just touch them at all uh and so i know making the pass on on ken there at the end would have been again really hard to to do especially you know i don't want to wreck any of the final six i mean i was unfortunately i just missed out by one position but and then tonight would have been a fantastic points for me if i would have been the top six but uh I think we saw, like you said, last season, the race at Kansas was pretty chaotic. You could kind of run in every line. Um, I'm hoping the dynamic track doesn't affect that too much, and we're still able to do that. Um, if that's the case, I mean, it, it's going to be absolutely insane. Just, I think last season we had, you know, on restarts and stuff like that, we basically had 20-something cars right on top of each other and, uh, you know, three, four wide and stuff like that going into the corner. So, um 
you know, fingers crossed we get to see that again next week and and we're able to put on a good show again for you guys. Well, we can't wait to see what Nate next week is going to bring for us. Uh, Cedric, before we let you go, the floor is now yours for any more shout outs. I appreciate it, man. A uh, huge shout out to my team, uh, Lucky Ducks, uh, Marge Sports for, um, well, for, for coming on. I, I know they're coming in for next season as well. So, uh, you know, I, I'm excited to run it back with them. Um, huge shout out to you guys for doing everything that you guys do. Uh, shout out to all the, the admin team. Um, and our uh and steve up in the the tower i guess um to do race control uh all their help uh, or for everything that they do you know it's very it's much appreciated coming from me um huge shout out to all the drivers too that show up on a weekly basis we have like 26 drivers uh tonight and i would say it's probably one of the higher numbers that we've had across all eight seasons heading into the last race or two. So hopefully next week we'll also have about, you know, the same numbers of drivers. That'd be great. Um, and uh, thank you to all the fans out there. And last but not least, uh, shout out to Rose to Joe's coffee. Well, that will be the 13 machine of Cedric Hunter. Congratulations on a second place finish here, Cedric and good luck on the last race of the season next week. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. As we move from second place, we go down to third, or we find ourselves with the si second highest runner of our championship six drivers. We have Ken Campbell with us. Ken, uh, certainly they're late. It looked like you a second place, third place. They were in the window for your grasp. But then that final restart, things got a little bit more crazy. How are you feeling with a third place finish and that last restart? Incredibly lucky. <laughs> That's... That's really the the only word I can describe it. Um, yeah, at the at the end of the the last run, I was uh, defending against Mason, and I was on the outside, and was just fine. And uh, Cedric was behind us, and so I knew I wanted to keep Mason behind me so that Cedric could have an extra car to pass. And I think I was in third at the time, and I was just comfortable running there, and, and thought I was going to get a, a a third. But uh, then the caution came out, and I have a hard time finding the limit with these cars, so I'm not good at short run at all, really. And so I, I was kind of nervous about it. And then with the restart, I think I spun the tires like three different times uh, on that first restart. And uh, luckily, Larry checked up for me and Brian checked up for me, and, and we were able to, to make it work. I fell back to fifth. And, uh, yeah, the, the whole time I was just like, okay, that just, you know, don't don't loop it and, and finish 20th. Just just get what you can get. And uh, I had taken, I didn't take any fuel on that last run. So I was expecting it to be a lot tighter than it was. And it wasn't until we were coming out of four and, and Shane was on my outside and, and then it got super tight. But at that point I couldn't lift and, and we made a little bit of contact. He, he got in the wall and I apologize for that. And, and, uh, he gets it, but, uh, I'm probably owed one as well, but, uh, yeah, just, uh, incredibly lucky to, uh, finish where I did. I mean, Ken, overall tonight, it was such a strong run for yourself, uh, being inside of the top five all night long. What can you take away from tonight? Because we've been saying it on the broadcast, I feel like almost all season, you've been under the radar. You haven't been the, the top, hot topic of Ken Campbell is up inside of the top three every single race. You've just been in the top 10, just outside of the top five. What confidence does t tonight's race give for you heading into Kansas next week? Uh, well, it gives me a lot. Uh, if if guys aren't talking about me, they're they're not thinking about me, right? And uh, th that's a good place to be when you're on track, because guys will kind of let you go or or not be looking at at you coming up behind and stuff like that. And so, I've enjoyed flying under the radar, to be honest with you. And and I hope that they uh, count me out again next week as well. And yeah, I'll just be able to put in the laps, find the line, and and run my race, right? I, t I talked about that last week and just run what I can run and, and hope that that's fast enough. And, and that's what I was doing tonight. And that's what I'm going to do at Kansas and, uh, and hope that it pays off. Well, we cannot wait to see how you're going to perform next week. Ken, congratulations on being the second highest of our championship six. And before we let you go, the floor is now yours for any shout outs. As always, uh, first and foremost, thanks to my wife, Casey, and my kids, Logan, Jet, and Easton. Uh, baseball season's picking up, so it's been a, a really busy time at the Campbell household. But they uh, they allow me to come and uh, and race and and compete with these guys, and and it's a lot of fun. All my teammates at Storm Motorsports, uh, Stitz, who couldn't be here, and Wade for for showing up. He finally got his PC issues worked out, and uh, so he's here. And and I thank Chelsea for letting him letting him come. 
uh, all the drivers and admins here at WSSR, Steve, uh, for doing race control. It's just really hard racing. I mean, a, a, as you saw all, all night, especially there at the last couple laps, that's just just really hard and really fun. Uh, and um, you guys up in the booth. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for giving us a great show to cover. That will be your third place finisher, Ken Campbell, and also will be second in points going for the championship heading into next week. Congratulations, Ken, on a top three finish, and good luck going for that championship. Appreciate it. As we go from third place, we go to our spotlight driver, going to be fifth place finisher. Talked about how Ken gave his opinion on the late race incident between himself and Shane Terrian. Well, we'll talk to the nine, get his thoughts. Shane Terrian, another championship driver, going to be the third highest finisher of our championship six. Shane, top five finish overall for the night. I know it was close to battle for a third place finish at moments. How are you feeling, though, after the way that tonight's roller coaster finished out? Uh, I think I'm, I'm happy, I guess. I don't know. I, if I didn't crash and qualify, who knows where I would have finished, but I'll take a, take a fifth after literally almost being in last place for a while there at the beginning. Yeah, that was something that we noticed um, was the fact that yourself and Benjamin Nelson starting in the back qualifying looked to be a lot harder than I think any of us really expected. How was that, though, going through the field, knowing that you had so much traffic to march through to finish up front? I mean, shockingly, uh, compared to past races, there was a lot of a lot of give and take. A lot of people let me go. There's a couple of people who raced me a little hard, but probably because their teammates are in the final six, I would assume. I have no idea. But for the most part, it was actually the most relaxing part of the race was passing those cars because a lot of people were just letting me go. And it was very nice. I wish that was like that all season. Well, we got one more race left for this season. We're heading to Kansas. You're going to be the third uh, in points heading into that race uh, based off where people are finishing. We're still waiting for the official confirmation, but uh, Shane, how, how does it feel knowing that you've got one more race to go and you're still in the hunt for this championship? Yeah, feels good. I mean, I get to actually uh, finish one of these championship rounds out. I uh, couldn't do it last season uh, due to the issues in my state but yeah i uh i'm excited kansas is gonna be weird it's gonna probably fall on qualifying so we'll see well we cannot wait to see how you're gonna perform next week shane the floor is now yours though for any more shout outs before we call it a night well, i'm just gonna shout out my teammates brian and zach uh evil controllers and then you know for the league i'm excited to come back next season i'm bringing a whole lot of friends that you know sam so be fun well one of those friends was in the chat quite a bit shout out to bronson stafford can't wait to see him out on track but shane congratulations on top five finish here tonight and good luck for that championship run next week at kansas thank you as we move away from our interviews thank you again to all the drivers that joined with us let's take a look at our unofficial results here tonight because there was a lot of movement Again, we had restart violations that hurt John Forbes from winning last week that gave the win to Shane Terrian. I'm curious how many of these drivers might be in a, a tricky spot. But I think they might be okay with the amount of wheel spin they were dealing with. As first place goes to Brian McCann, Cedric Hunter gets second, third we find Ken Campbell, Brian P. Johnson fourth, fifth we find Shane Terrian, sixth is Ryan Kelly, Larry Yingling gonna be in seventh, eighth is where Zach Hall lies, Benjamin Nelson gonna be in ninth, John Forbes finishing out our top 10. I mean, all of our championship contenders, great finishes. Talk about how they could not afford to finish outside of the top 10. And you do the count, they're all in the top 10 with, you know, Brian McCann getting the win, Ken Campbell in third, seeing Shane Terrian in fifth, Ryan Kelly sixth, eighth where we find Zach Hall, and then in ninth is Benjamin Nelson. It was a great finish overall for all of our contenders going for the championship run but it was a mess all around uh robert for all these drivers here tonight certainly uh i don't think anyone expected it to be as chaotic at the end of this race no i wasn't expecting it but you know racing is racing things are going to happen out there and i'm you know i, I want to say unfortunately but at the same time it made for a good ending here as uh as you said, you know, we're looking at these guys that are in the playoffs, you know, finishing at least in the top 10. It's next week after the points come out, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see where all the points stand, how many drivers show up next week, 
and what these drivers need to do to solidify themselves to be able to call them a season seven champion. I'll well, talk about points. They were just updated Ooh. now. We'll see if there's any changes throughout the week with penalties, but unofficially after tonight's race, Ryan McCann, a four point buffer over Ken Campbell, a five point buffer over Shane Tarion, six points over Ryan Kelly, nine points over Zach Hall. And if Benjamin Nelson wants to become a back-to-back -back champion and be the third driver to do so, Benjamin Nelson is 10 points out. Nelson's oh. going to need a lot of work. He's going to need a lot of bad luck from other drivers if he's going to grab the championship. But it looks to be it's going to be a dogfight yeah. between at least four to five of these drivers if they can get bonus points and where they finish at the end of next week's race. Oh, man, ladies and gentlemen, you need to tune in next week at the final race uh, here at WSSR. Sam, that is going to be chaotic. And uh, one position, two positions, bonus points, lead a lap. You know, oh, my God. I mean, good luck for you and Justin next week because your brain's not going to be able to do the math. Uh, that's what you get a paper and a calculator. Uh -huh. for. It's very helpful <laughs> moments to Woo! jot down those numbers. But ultimately, we wait for after the race is done to crown the champion. But tonight, it just sets up what next week's going to bring. And speaking about what next week's going to bring, as we have this upcoming Thursday off as the Shoney's Doghouse Cup Series we took a two-week break. Tomorrow's the end of that break. We'll be back next week as our all four series are going to be live in action. And it's going to be our final. Final, having four races for a while uh, yeah. as we're going to be having WSSR having their final race next week but starting off the week at the ISRC Truck Series they're coming up to the end of the regular season just a handful of races left do not want to miss the conclusion of how that regular season is going to end before they head into the dramatic playoffs speaking of playoffs the chase is underway as race number three for the brb butt kicker cup series is coming to a conclusion as they have five races to figure out who's going to take the championship in gavin rogers the favorite he's had two bad races in a row which is leaving it wide open there are three drivers still in a hunt to grab the gold on tuesday night then Wednesday is going to be our last race for season eight. Who will take the championship? Don't want to miss it on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, the Shoney's Doghouse Cup Series is back to racing coverage as they will have a five to six week period to figure out who will be having the better middle of the season. Can't wait for Robert. Any final thoughts for tonight before we call it an evening here on Freaky Fast Broadcasting? No, I actually don't believe it or not. I am uh, tongue tongue tied, tongue twisted, whatever you want to call it. I have no final thoughts here tonight. That it was just an overall grueling race for these drivers, um, and not by standards of yellows, just grueling of keeping the car on the track, battling it on every turn through the tri ovals. Thirty laps into it, the car got evil loose, and these guys did one well of a job and got everything all set up for us for one more race, Sam. And that's it. One more, ladies and gentlemen, and we're going to crown the Season 7 champion. And like you said, will it be Ben, you know, going back to back, or will we see a new champion? Everyone searching for the gold. We got veterans. We have newcomers. It's going to be a fun one to watch on who will get the championship next week. But for tonight, thank you so much to everyone that joined with us. Uh, for myself, Sam Dyer, for Robert Moyer Jr. running a little bit of double duty tonight and commentating and running productions. Thank you, Robert, for being my co-host up in the booth talking. And to everyone else that works here at Freaky Fast Broadcasting, thank you so much. Uh, for all the work that you do and ultimately to the fans that watch uh, your favorite drivers just watch us here at freaky fast broadcasting we appreciate you for being with us through every race and every journey as these drivers here tonight season eight about to come to a conclusion next week do not want to miss out as they will head to Kansas to crown a champion but for us we're going to take the weekend off then we'll be back for ISRC Truck Series action. Do not want to miss it. Monday night will be our next Freaky Fast broadcast.